It's a question answer. It's, it's anyone who wants to ask, ask a question, feel free, or I can read from something, and then you can be spurred on from what I read, and maybe it might trigger some questions. So it's entirely up to you how we go with this. Again, I'll say my name again. I'm Kusia Ka'aroye, student teacher of the master teacher. Any questions? No? Okay. I'll give you an example. Good of evening. Oh, good evening. Okay, Rahubai. Good evening. Greetings. Greetings. Who am I speaking to? You are speaking to Jose. Jose Otep Matabel. Okay. I'm speaking from Zambia. Okay. Good to and, see uh, you. It's glad to see you on board. Thank you. Actually, uh, I, I joined the youth about uh, in September initiation. And uh, I requested friends because I'm coming from a different spiritual path. I requested friends and family to send a few questions that so we can clarify. So I'll be asking a few questions throughout the meeting that are not only mine, mm -hmm. but also uh, from family and friends. Okay, lovely, lovely. Okay, um, Zach, before you ask your question, Zach Phillips, I see yes. your hands up, so we'll get to you as well, okay? Come again? No, I'm speaking to another uh, person who's got their hand up. So go ahead. Okay. Is it Jose or Jose? How you how you say it? Okay, I'll start with the questions from my son, which are, how do we know we are real? How do we know we are real? Yes. Okay. It's, how old is your son? Because <laughs> 15, 15 years old. How old is your son? 15 years old. 15, okay. Uh, it's, 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 I'm going to keep it very simple and start trying to um, convolute it or um, think. It's essentially touch yourself. How do you know you're alive? Pinch yourself. Okay. That's the affirmation and confirmation that you exist. It's that simple. Okay. Now, the in order for you to recognize the reality that you exist, is because you go into um, biology, okay, and, and chemistry. So you know that you have uh, certain systems in your body. They're known as the nervous system, okay? And the nervous system is connected to your, your spinal system, etc. So with the sensations that you have and your five sensations, which are really one sensation, which is your hearing, your touch, your seeing, your tasting, etc. when you actually come bind that together into one is actually touch. Yeah, so those nerve impulses, okay, when you're touching your skin, you know and you affirm that you are alive. Okay, so that's a physiology aspect. Now, the other aspect to you is that you have an energy that's inside you, which is like a driver. So imagine a car, okay, a car cannot move from A to B without a driver, okay? And that driver or the person, the being that's in that driving seat is the real you, okay? So your body is the vehicle, that's the car, the vehicle, but the essence of you, that driver is the real you that's animating that vehicle, okay? And those are, they, they come in two different essences. One is known as the spirit, and one is known as the soul, okay? So I'll just go and read something from a book called Pa Tarak. Okay, so we have been taught in the West that you have a soul and you have a spirit. And some of the times they're used interchangeably. So sometimes you get spirit for soul and soul for spirit. This is really confusion based on religious understanding of what the soul and spirit is. But in our spiritual science as Sabians or Africans, we were aware that was there's two components to the soul, okay, and the spirit. And I'm going to just read that to you. So let me just share the screen. This is from Patarak, Revelations to the Nwapians, soul, soul, spirit, spirit. Lekum, can you see that? Let's try and see if I, I don't get in your way. Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, can you, can you see this here? Lekum, my beloved Nwapu Kharadu, Nwapian children, you asked about the soul and spirit. Do you know and remember all I said to you of them and you as females and males? Nuwapians, I told you of Ba'a, soul, 
and Rawa soul. Yeah, so that's just showing you there's a differentiation between the two. Okay, and I spoke to you about the Ka'a spirit and Nafas, okay, um, which is also spirit, and about Achach, etheric being, and Khu, oversoul. So you can see from what the Master teachers explained to us that there's different components of your existence. It's not just one type of um, component, you know, you have your spirit and you have your soul interchangeably misunderstood, okay? You have, have aspects of you, okay? And those aspects of you reside in different dimensional states, okay? But they're all connected to your physical body. Hence, I was using the car as an analogy, okay? And the driver as an analogy, yeah? So there's something driving this vehicle, but it's working on the principles of the spiritual realm or the energy realm. Okay, and that energy realm is what's activating you in the physical realm. Okay, so for your son, for him to understand that there's just more than what's, what's going on is just that your reality of who you Madam are. Zamal, Ni, yeah. your, your mic is muted on Clubhouse. Oh, sorry, Clubhouse. <laughs> Apologies. I've attended to do that, so I apologize. Okay, I'll step it back a bit and I'll read from what the question was about how do you know you're, um, you're alive or how do you know that you're real? Okay. And it's it essentially touching yourself to confirm who you are and your existence on this physical plane is how you know that you exist or that you're real. But to go further into it, I, I'm explaining that you also have a spirit and a soul and you have double portions of those principles of your existence. So the double portion is that you have a Ba'a soul and a Rawa soul, which is kind of like um, condensed in the European understanding of it. And they say spirit and soul because of the religious connotations that's being um, explained in the West about what a soul and a spirit is. But in the ancient teachings of our ancestors, we were aware there was also two double portions, which is the soul and the rawa. And this is what I'm explaining. So I apologize for those on Clubhouse when they're hearing that. So you have that, and then you also have, you ask, I'm going to verse six now, and you ask again about these parts of your existence. So one, pa hu, the overbeing, okay? Part number two, pa achach, the etheric being or etheric being. Number three, pa ba'a, the creative expressional being. Number four, pa rawa, the breath of the living being. Part number five, the pa ka'a, the exoplasmic being. Number six, pa nafas, the living being. Pa khatat, the physical being. And number eight, pa khabatu, demigods that are children of pa nataru, called angelic beings, both agreeable and disagreeable. Okay? So this is part of your existence is that you have agreeable and disagreeable that are working and operating through you, okay? And you have within the agreeable and disagreeable these various aspects of your existence. So to confirm who you are is the acknowledgement, first and foremost, that you are exist by touching yourself. So that confirms that you're here, okay? Then you have to go back and ask yourself, your parents, your parents exist, unless they obviously transition, that's different. But they must have existed to bring you into this realm as it of existence then you have to go back to who are their parents parents so your parents parents your parents parents confirms your existence if you want further proof you can get pictures you know memorabilia etc just to prove that you actually exist as a dimensional as a being in this dimension and what this dimension operates on is persons places and things the nouns Okay, but there's a fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, and on, so on and so forth, which is all within this one universe. Okay, so I hope that makes it clear for your son. I hope we haven't confused him any, any further, but um, we can always unpack it or explain further what these actual parts of your existence is. Okay, so um, feel free to ask. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, actually, we've listened to the answer uh, closely. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, by the facial expression from himself, it uh, feels like that's all. It's all okay. And uh, we may recommend ask for recommendations regarding like uh, uh, which book we can dive into it. 
Okay. Yeah, so okay. we can further deep down. Right. Uh, but I, I guess on my son, that was it. I personally also have a question, and I have won the meeting. I invited uh, my brother in business partner, Gabriel Mwansa, also from Zambia. Mm -hmm. And I guess he has some questions as well to bring it up. Uh, but my personal question is, uh, when I came to Zambia, I went to visit uh, the museum, and then I've seen something related with witchcraft, which was there are different types of it, and um, one of them is for protection. So I wanted to know, according with the culture, science, or also, but how can we protect ourselves from such? Okay, right. Now, when you say how can you protect yourself from such, it depends... Let's first of all look at the, the word itself, right? And what it means. Because what we do within Wu Sabat as the teachings is that we are factologists and ontologists, okay? Factologists mean that we research things, okay? Whether it's scientific, etymology, etc., And then we get to the understanding from what language, etc., is coming from in order to have, again, an overstanding, right? Then you also have, um, within that word itself, by looking at it, you're looking at the word witch, which is a Indo-European word coming from one of these Indo-European um, languages. Okay, you're actually looking at the word wise. Okay, and when you look at the word craft, you're looking at somebody who um, operates or utilizes um, certain energies. You with me? So the, it's basically or a healer. So no, sorry, craft means teacher, a wise teacher. That's what it's actually coming from. The word wise teachers, where you get the word witchcraft, right? So now, depending on the usage of this particular wise craft, right, is what would either be termed, determined as being negative or positive to that individual, okay, or to a group of people or to a race. Now, in, 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 in the aspects of who we are, we have been placed under a spell, Okay, by witches, you see what I'm saying? A spell of known as Leviathan. So we are actually under a spell, and that spell is racial ignorance and mental blind, you know, racial ignorance and blindness of who we are, not knowing our history, not knowing our culture, being cut off from our ancestors, etc. So we are actually under a spell cast by wise people or wise women who, in ancient times. This is what they did to us, okay. Now, based on what you've gone to, you said Zambia, right? Is that Zambia you said? And to the museum? Yeah, correct, correct. Okay. Zambia, Lusaka, correct. So it all depends on what type of um, energies or craft that they were, they were using on you, because it can be used two different ways. Like the, the European language, for instance, is a form of witchcraft because it's kept us under a spell. You with me? Okay. Yeah? Because we're yes. using certain tones and certain vibrations, which is not uh, conducive for us. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm okay. Now, I don't know what type of witchcraft that you have seen, whether it's blood <coughs> witchcraft or, or, or drinking um, alcohol, etc. But depending on the type of witchcraft, loosely using that term, is being used, utilized, will depend on whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. So, for instance, right, okay. yeah. So, what? what yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Right. Yeah, just the ignorance behind it, uh, yes. and I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate love your explanation mm. about it. Uh, I would like also to have a recommendation how to dive into this topic because it's not something that I can confirm that I've experienced towards myself. Right. Because I was never inclined to it. It's just right. something that came up when I went for a visit into the museum. And I was like, okay, I would like to have an answer about this. But I cannot confirm if by experience that, yes, I've been witchcraft or something like that. Yeah. I wanted to know, due to the environment that I'm involved, how can I maneuver around and keep going within the culture of course. and uh, of course. Yeah. spirituality of the body? No problem. And, and we do have protection... Uh, over us, first and foremost, in the form of our ancestors. When we, when we actually sever the ties of religion, when we give up all the religious beliefs, etc., we're actually 
exercising ourselves. We're removing all these different forms of witchcraft that's been placed on us. Now we're tapping into our true spiritual sciences. You see what I'm saying? And our true yeah. spiritual sciences is linking in back with our ancestors based on the tones, vibrations, and frequency that's within your DNA. So your DNA is made up of a certain type of tones, vibration, and frequencies, and only activating those frequencies will make that link back with your ancestors. Does that make sense? And, yes. And your ancestors, yes, some of them are negative, some of them are positive. So you, you within your being, that, that etheric energy, that soul being, will have to start learning to know that true inner voice that speaks to you. Mm -hmm. To know whether what you what you're doing is either positive or agreeable or negative and disagreeable. So for um like what the masters explain here, um in going back to Patarak, um soul, soul, spirit, spirit, verse eight mm -hmm. talks about there's eight um chabatu demigods that are children of the Nataru called angelic beings, both agreeable and disagreeable. Then it goes on to explain some were cast out from above and became known as Nephilim, fallen ones. They called them Elohim in the Bible and Alayhat in the Quran. The agreeable ones are called Malakim and the disagreeable ones are called Molek, okay? The, they count in three groups, Milcom, Molek, Melek. The two most known are the disagreeable ones called Cherubim and the agreeable ones called Seraphim. The Sumerians mm -hmm. call them Anunnaki. The Chaldeans call them Anakim and Raphaim. They, they are tribes also. The Islamic faith of the Quran calls them jinn, who can be in human form, both as males and females. Do you see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So yeah. the, the, the reality is that these forces, these spells, these incantations, these magical um, words that are being uttered by people all over the world, whether it be in different religions or even just day to life, day-to-day -day conversations that we have, okay, mm -hmm. we're actually casting spells on ourselves. You with me? Just even the word good morning, for instance, it's, an, it's a spell. You're, yeah. you, you just utter the tone and the vibration, but you don't actually don't understand the energy that's going behind that. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. what's happening is that when you're able to protect yourself is by acknowledging who your ancestors are and doing that is calling on them and also the study of Wu Sabat and what you Wu Sabat can do with, for you in your life and what you can do for Wu Sabat is your protection. So once you start to um, read these sciences and these affirmation and these actual facts that's being brought to us by our master teacher, you start to realize that the spell will start to um, levitate out of your being. You start to gain more consciousness because what you're doing is you're activating the true energy that's within you, your soul. The soul has become awoken to what is truly what, what it is and what it can actually achieve. And in doing that, by the study of Usabat, by the questions you ask, you're, you're, you're breaking the spell on different levels. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So some of mm -hmm. us have stepped out of religion. We're not even interested in what religion's got to offer. We only use religion because people are still in there. That's why we give you different quotes and different um, you know, things that you can relate to. But once mm -hmm. you're able to surpass that, and once you're able to accept that these are things that was given to us to give, keep us suppressed as a people, and for us to cut off the, the link we have to our ancestors and, and nature and natural nature is why um, the spell is here in the first place. And it's being enforced every day don't think they've given it up because as you have you noticed um i don't know the part of the world that you're from but in england they move straight from um halloween and then from halloween they move straight into christmas and then so as soon as they jump from christmas they jump straight into what's the next one valentine's day yeah you see i'm really off even the spells is even part of me because it's been in so embedded in, in uh, society and people's psyche, I can just reel off these different things that are part of the spell. Does that make sense? Okay. So, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So the spell mm -hmm. is not just um, some hocus pocus thing. The spell is actually the words and the culture that we have adopted to live by. That's the spell. So we have to learn to then break away from that 
and start work, doing things that ha works for us. And that's where Wu Sabat comes in. Once you connect with those ancestral forces, or once you connect with the nine ether forces, okay, nine ether forces will visit their children in firstly in your mind. Yeah, because you have an ether link to the mental realm. And that mental realm is where your nine ether forces reside. You see what I'm saying? And with that, they activate, nine ether activates you. But you first have to first denounce those things that you've been raised to believe and accept as a child. You see, and it's, it, it happens to all of us. We, you know, no one is exempt. That's why we're here now. That's the reason why we're in listening to these classes, etc. Because somewhere down the line, an ancestor has awoken something in us, or we've heard something, or our DNA has gone off at a particular stage in our life because you have something called a genetic explosion. And what that simply means is that your DNA is encoded. Yeah, just like how you have a computer. A computer, in order for a program to work, it has an encoding and it has a ones and zeros and bytes, etc. And that programming, okay, will... will um, connect to that application and that application will work. You hear the word program and application? Well, likewise, once Wu Sabat um, um, deprograms the things that we've been taught over the years, we then apply Wu Sabat to our lives and then the journey begins where your ancestors will work through you. You with me? And then we can be all united as one being again. So I hope that helps with the, uh, um, your question. 100%. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I get that uh, when it comes to the protection, I should look at uh, Patarak, uh, soul, soul, spirit, spirit. And uh, when it comes to the question that my son asked, I didn't get the, the reference on where to dive into the topic um, regarding the question that he came up about uh, what's real. Okay, you can... Um... There's various books that you can find um, about your life. For instance, there's one called Concentration, Patarak called Concentration. Okay. And also Patarak called, um, what I said, so, 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 Spirit, Spirit. There's so many different ones. Just to reel them off the top of my head is, is, is actually quite hard. Um, Black Magic, White Magic. There you go. Who said that? Whoever said that, yep. Yeah. Black Magic, White Magic is another one. Um, that will also, de you know, de break down the spell. There's also one called Breaking the Spell on Blacks. Um, that one mm -hmm. is a very, very powerful one, um, which goes into how once you relinquish all those belief systems, yeah, and that goes into the nine ether and the nine ether and how nine ether and ghost, because right now, most of us, majority of the population on this planet are working off of ghost forces yeah and our people especially because we're quite highly spiritual people we naturally gravitate towards spiritual things you with me or we find solace in spiritual um, um be belief systems or rituals and that's why it's so easy for us to be caught up in this and then what takes place is that once you're caught up in these religious systems the word religion itself means to tie and bind, you see? So it's come from the root word or the Latin word religia, which means to tie and bind. So you're binding yourself to a religion, okay, that is not from you, it's alien to you. And it being alien to you, and you are opening your doors or your inner being to that religion, it binds you, which means that you are now no longer in the forces of your ancestors, you're now allowing other spiritual forces to work through you and allow you to see from your mind's eye what they see. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why we, um, our brothers and sisters, do the things that they do, not realizing they have spiritual forces that work through them, you know? And it goes even deeper into genetics and DNA, etc. But essentially, that's what's taking place. All right? Yes, my sister. Um, yes, you can. Um, there's a... Before you, there's a brother, Zach Vic Phillips, and then you you can come and check. Hi, Zach. I see your hands up for a while, so greetings. Ask your question. Greetings. It's Rachel. Oh, so Rachel, fine. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's okay, because I'm, I'm using his, his Zoom, so that's fine. Okay, no worries. Once again, I'm really grateful, humbled to be here. I really am. So thank you for your classes. It's been great. 
Um, I want to ask a question. Um, I've been when I was doing my research, starting my journey on um the awakening, I was um got some information about when we blacks used to rule in England, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um they were called the Jacobites. Um, and I live in the, the north, um, here in Durham, and you can see a lot of buildings. So I've gone to Durham Cathedral. You can see a lot of buildings of like you know black faces, and you can tell that we used to rule in England. I want to find out how, um we connect from the Jacobites when we ruled as black people in, in the UK, mm. the Hebrews and the Sybils. I don't know if you know about the Sybils. The Sybils were the original um, women of the um, planet before um, and the matriarch and rule before patriarch came in mm -hmm. and took over. And so I want to find out how we connect the Hebrew Jacobites and the Sybils, if you know. Um, no, I, I will be, I'll be, Honest, and I'm not familiar with those terminologies, the Sybils. I just feel, is it S-Y or C? S-Y. Is it S-Y-B-I-L? Yeah. I've come across it, but I haven't had any full study on that. Um, I can touch on the Jacobites, okay, because yeah. it's, it's basically, okay, this is a um, the history of who we refer to as the Jacobites, if you look in the name itself, you're looking at the word Jacob or Yakub. Okay. And as, yes. we broke, as we broke down, Yakub is from a particular lineage. All right. Mm -hmm. And that lineage was of the Adamite seed. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. Does the Jacobites now, connected to the Hebrews? Yes. Because that would be one. That's when you're saying Jacob, his other name that was given to him was Israel. So were there black people or white people? The, the, originally, the Jacobites or the Israelites were of black origin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they had a black origin. So they were the, remember when we explain in other classes, you have Abraham from Abraham's genealogy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Abraham was also, if you go and research who, what the Chaldeans looked like, the Chaldeans were a mixture of Africans and Hindus. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's why they were black, but what they were not Africans. There's a difference. Yes. That's why I'm saying that. So these were the genealogy of the Adamite race. Got you. Okay. You understand? <laughs> so the Adamites yeah. originally were of dark skin or, and of African um, descent in the sense of that they were the gravitation process that were used was that they used the original Africans that were here, the Bataites. Okay. But they're the eight ethers that you were talking about in the last. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you have the different ethers. So yes, they will uh, manifest as having dark skin. Some of them to the point of having woolly hair, and some of them having wavy, wavy hair. Okay. So Abraham's within Abraham's genealogy, and also um, the tribe of Ishmael, because Abraham had, Abraham had um, two sons. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Isaac and Ishmael. And from the lineage of Isaac came Jacob, yeah. Mm -hmm. And from the lineage of Ishmael came Kedar, Muhammad, etc. But yeah. these were all Adamites. Does okay. that make sense? All right. So yes, the migration of some of these black people ended up in um, the UK. So yeah. Right? Yeah. So by by different migrational migration patterns. Some of these black people did end up in the UK and also Africans of the African genealogy pool also ended up in the UK because the original people that was here, they now refer to them as leprechauns in the, yes. in the folk, you know, in Ireland, in Ireland, Irish, Irish, all those kind of things. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Irish folklore. So, so are they the same people that got taken to Jamaica and the Caribbeans? Would there be, the, would there be Adamites or would those be Africans? It's a mixture of both. Do you see what I'm saying? Because right. we got mixed in into a, it's, a, it's like a melting pot. So there was, remember, there was two slave trades. There was the um, West Coast, and then there was from um, Zanzibar and the East Coast when the Arabs also were taken from Tanzania and those other areas and taken over and making a migration to the um, Af um, Americas. Yeah. They also had the West Coast slave slave trade. Okay, or slave sale, whatever you want to call it, um, which is really a kidnapping. We were kidnapped, essentially. Yeah, and then, so these Arabs had also mixed in with the original people that were in those 
um, areas of Tanzania, etc. Um, let me see if I can bring up the holy tablets. So yeah, within the holy tablets, he explains in there that um, there were certain tribes who came to Africa from the Arab nation, okay, who were descendants of Ishmael, who were mm -hmm. descendants of Abraham, who came from the order of Chaldea, who was a mixture of Hindus and Africans. Yeah. And yeah. these were your Adamites. But the Adamites were also mixed in third, later on with other tribes. And those other tribes became known as your Canaanite tribes in, in the biblical term. Okay. But the names for them will be your Greeks, your Phoenicians, yeah, and, and many other um, nations that were in the Middle Eastern area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that mixture, they will still retain the African um, looks, you know, phenotypes. Phenotypes. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why, even though they were of, had African phenotypes, they were influenced a lot by the religions of that time. And those religions of that time was um, Judaism, Islam, etc. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. And, and then from that migration, some of them ended up in the, U, the, the UK or the English Isles. Okay. Um, um, Scotland and yeah, Scotland, Ireland. Exactly. And um, London was where this, the Jacobites ruled or the buildings and... Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about the Jacobites ruling those places. All I do know is that these Africans or descendants of Africans stroke um, Hindus, they ruled certain parts of this UK. You with me? Yeah, because when the Germans came, they, they kicked them out, didn't they? Because Europa was named after a black woman. Um, from the um, research that see, I, that yeah, I that did. Yeah, that you researched. Yeah. What book did you read that in? Because um, there's, there's a lot that People have written about certain things, but they ne don't necessarily break down the names, etc. So I don't know what book is that. Did you read that in? It's mainly like a, a YouTube channel that does. It's, it's, she's got oh, a book okay. on it. Okay. Got a book. I've got the list of books, but I haven't got them to hand. Right. But um, it, it, but also I've got a book here that's called um, um, uh, Mammy Water, African Ancient Gods and Goddess Unveiled. And it talks a lot about the Jacobites and the Hebrews and um, the Sibyls, right, the connection right. in there. And it's it's like a 3,000 3, page um, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. volume, I've got two of it. And there's a reason why I'm asking the question because I feel like I'm connected to the Sibyls because the Sibyls are the Africans. Okay, and then okay. the Hebrews, like you said, are the Adamites. And I know that the mixture's from that mm -hmm. um the reason why i'm asking as well because the um hebrews of obviously believe that they will come back and rule um the uk mm -hmm. and um because they've got that that they believe that's their promise for this um aquarian age um do you know right. anything about that no unfortunately i can't comment on somebody else's book how old is is the person still alive can you ask them questions is there a group um that you can pose questions to them on because as much as I would like to, and I can I can explain about the Jacobites aspect, mm -hmm. but regarding um, whether they're, they're going to be the next rulers of this planet, etc., know that the Adamites, okay, when they're mixed in with other races on the planet, they forfeited a lot of things. Right. What do you mean by forfeit? Too? Well, they were given certain commandments to follow, and they they didn't listen to those. Like for instance, the children of of um, Abraham was told not to mix their seed with the cursed seed of Canaan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that plague that they, um, as it says in, in, in the Bible, okay, it was a genetic plague or a genetic um, deform, deformity. Yeah. That genetic deformity manifested as having pale skin. You yeah. what I'm saying? Um, liver spots. Leprosy. Leprosy. Lep well, they call it leprosy, but you can't yeah. find that word in, in the, the Bible. No yeah, I know. Word for leprosy. So yeah. it's actually many tumors and other deform deformities that manifested and one of them was having blonde hair and blue eyes mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah. uh 12 tribes of israel some of them acquired these lep um, let's use the word leprosy loosely they acquired a lot of different deformities mm -hmm. you with me and yeah. from those deformities um the adamites literally got wiped out 
because they, they had mixed in so far in with the Canaanites. Yes. Yeah. See? So essentially you had different tribes like the Phoenicians. You had the Phoenicians who were one, one stock was dark skin of African um, origin. And then another was pale skin by the Canaanite origin. You see what I'm saying? But there was still yeah. those Phoenicians. Yeah. See? So they live side by side with each other. And some of them mix their seed with each other, producing other nations. So it's very hard in in the, in the historical records to know who's who, you see? All I can you. give you is that um, Abraham had two seeds and from the seed of the Adamites, some of them did end up in the, in the English Isles along with the Africans who were originally there, who I said were known as the leprechauns in Irish folklore. Yeah. Okay, okay so the, the Africans were there first. Yeah, yeah. And the Adamites we, remember, came in afterwards. Exactly, because what you have to realize is the land that we know as Earth, okay, the land masses at one point were together. And most of us migrated from the equatorial Guinea region all the way down to South Africa and Botswana and Kalahari Desert. We migrated in, into different, different patterns of migration. Some of us went into the Northeast, some of us went South, some of us went West. And from these migrations, that's on where we settled, other um, um, nations came and mixed in with us. So one of the places that we did settle was actually in Africa. Way, I'm talking about millions of years here. I'm not talking just the other day. You with me? So we yeah, were in these regions. And then for later on, thousands of years later, is when other cultures and races came in and mixed in with us. You see, and most of the time we were literally annihilated. So you think that we'd never existed or never even were in those regions, but we were. Okay. okay. Can you talk, so, talk about the Jacobites then? What, what what do you know about them? So that's what I'm saying. The Jacobites is Yakub. That's talking Yacoub. about Yakub. And Yakub right. can be broken down into two ways. Is You have Jacob, the um, son of um, Isaac, and you also have Yakub, as in the gravitation that took place when um, you know we we explain about um, the person called Yakub's grafted devil, yeah, in yeah. from um, from the teachings of the known as the Dunakils who existed thousands of years prior to the Adamites. Yeah, he, that's a, that's a, that to take away the disagreeable out there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so you have different different things, different stories different events taking place sometimes simultaneously mm. see so when history or people are recording and because it's happened sometimes as on a simultaneous level the two are married together and it seems yeah. like the same race or same stock of people that are around but it wasn't right see so the jacobites could be it is is referring more to the yakub story going back 8,400 years. While, right. while the story that you, you talk called the Jacobites, okay, that's going into your biblical story, which goes back only 4,000 years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but they, they've married the two together. So that's why it, it, it can come across as very confusing, you see, mm -hmm. as to who was where and how was who was this, etc. Now, the Sibyls, I'm not familiar about the Sibyls, Obviously, we know that African woman, to some saying, or African race, have been here on this planet millions of years. So, yeah. you know, but I'm not. The Sibyls, when we call them mummy water, they're a mixture of um, the kind of like the mermaids. Um, right. So you're going you know. way, way into ancient times, then. Yeah. Yeah. So that's because that, they, they they said that the mummy waters were the ones who connected with source or God, and they used to kind of like hear from um, the the message and pass it on. Um, to the people uh, until obviously the um, earth was matriarch and then obviously then the um, Hebrew prophets came and took over them killed them and then they took over and that's why the world's a patriarch society as we live in right now so they, that right. that book talks about that okay um, yeah I'll, I'll be wrong to quote or answer for somebody else's um, doctrine because yeah. that's not how it's taught in Wusabat you see what I'm saying 
Yeah, it's just like some of the walls about stuff is in there. It's not a doctrine. Yeah, no, no, it, and, and I appreciate that it would be because the thing is, that's the original information. The knowledge of our ancestors is what everybody has tapped into. Do you see what I'm saying? Every culture, every religion has tapped into our original culture. So yes, there were beings known as sirens that existed in the in the waters, and and they actually resided there for thousands and thousands, millions of years. Mm -hmm. Then then what happened was, as time went on, some of them came on land and um, became known as the Pataites, the original Sans people who evoluted from the waters. Yeah, because I was listening to Mark Malachi York yesterday and he was talking about when, um, I forgot what he called it, the moon, where the, pla the planet that, that we're in came and crashed into Earth not on purpose, but when they were coming into here mm -hmm. and the, the beings in the water thought that they were being attacked and came out to fight them. Exactly. And exactly. so that's what the book talking about. It's the same beings that they're talking about as we right, call mummy right, water. Right. right, I see, I see. Okay, so that that teaching is referring to when Nibiru, so you're talking about... Nibiru, yes. Pre-dynastic, pre even... <laughs> we're talking about um, extraterrestrials that were aquatic, in nature okay that's right these, yeah. these extraterrestrials some of them were reptilians some of them were also um mammalian okay and what happened was they actually resided in the water because as we know earth itself okay is a water planet yeah it's not a. it's not it's not known as it wasn't known as terror yeah it was known as uh gaia or a um tiamat okay and tiamat means maiden of life Mm. So when Tiamat was um, in existence, because Earth has gone through many different birth date records, right? Tiamat was actually three and a half times the size Earth is now. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the beings that lived on this planet were of aquatic nature, but we mm -hmm. resided here way before them as, as living in the seas. So that goes to our story. Our story is that um, our ancestor, known as Pata, okay, was the one that was responsible for seeding this planet with our life, our existence. And that was over four billion years ago, you see? So we actually grew with the planet. Then other extraterrestrials intervened or came in and also mixed in with us through our evolution. So they would take evolutionary beings, i.e. us, the aquatic sirens, and then they'll do their own experiments and leave them here. So there's many different types of um, di dinosaur type um, human beings that were walking the planet at one time. And those are some of your sirens. Those are some of your um, extraterrestrials, reptilians that had their children and their seed on here. And beings will, um, extraterrestrials will come back and forth at different times in order to mix and breed with them. You know I mean? Or some, some were even as food. You right. You understand? So yeah. it's, it, um, for, for, uh, for me to give an uh, explanation on somebody else's doctrine would be wrong. It, you would have to uh, kind of like seek information from them. But I can give you like a, like a scope on what the link is between our teachings and their teachings. And it, 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 what it's seeming like you're explaining is that there were extraterrestrials who were here thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, and through their mixture, they got rid of the females. That's what yours, that's what the book is saying. Now, am I correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So the, the female essence itself is that know that she also was able to give birth to the male. Yeah, so I don't know at what stage or whatever this person is saying how they got rid of the females because the way how wolves are back... Not, not got rid of the females, got rid of the female rule. Because the, oh, okay, the, 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 the women, rule. Ha, yeah, matriarchal rule. Yeah, matriarchal right. rule, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that 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 um, point in time, I don't know what point in time that was, but um, from wolves are back, the teachings is that what, what happened was the females, they were being constantly being attacked by other creatures or, or you know so to defend themselves they created a male you with me and that male that was created was using the, the the testosterone of the frog and the testosterone of the frog 
to because he could be um enhanced with muscles and strength. And then though from that, then when she created that male, she fell in love with her creation. Okay, so that's what Wu Sabat teaches. And from falling in love with her creation, she then gave up her divinity to the male. Got you. You yeah, and then, that's and then, what the book is saying. Yeah, right, got it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so it seems like it's on the same lines. Then it's on the same lines in the sense of, of how they how they're teaching is that it was during the time when um, prehistoric man even existed. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a time when females were, had the ability to procreate without the aid of a man, and you can find this in um, stories in Indonesia of a female who actually gave birth to two twins, you see what I'm saying, without the aid of a man. And that's what, yeah. yeah it's called Got it. Par Parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it sounds like he's on the same lines. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, yes, my sister, you've got a question. <laughs> Greetings, greetings. Um, I'm just going to read out the Pleasure to hear. Um, have you here, my sister? <laughs> um, so I've got two questions. Yes. My first is about something very new into you know we about learning a lot mm -hmm. um, and trying to take it all in and mm -hmm. understand sort of you know understand doctrine how everything is uh, sort of given to people and to uh, right. helping helping us to to elevate ourselves. Mm -hmm. My first question is about sort of worship versus reverence. Okay. In terms of the role of um, Dr. Malachi Zio. Okay. And so coming from, I was never really um, a particularly religious person, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I understand the the doctrine of religion is to worship, is worship. Yeah. And to hold someone in very high esteem, mm -hmm. see that person's your saviour. Mm -hmm. And I think it leads a lot of people down a really destructive, um, disempowering path. Mm -hmm. So how do you sort of safeguard new people coming into Bruce about learning about the um, the destruction of Bruce about mm -hmm. and having reverence for Dr. Malachi Z York as opposed mm. to worship? Mm. Because I've just seen on your on your sign there, you know, our saviour is here. I think yeah. there's a very fine line, fine line between yeah. people disempowering themselves yeah. by giving up their own, you know, sovereignty to another being, another mm. and I understand how much um, you know, that this is yeah, basically that's just my I'm wanting to kind of really okay. have that clear. Right. Yeah, it's it's um like you said, it is a quite a fine line because uh it can be misconstrued because of the religious understanding of what worship and reverence is. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, in our culture, okay, African culture, Sabian culture, is that we revered our ancestors, we gave reverence to them. When they transitioned, we pour libation and other things to them. Where, where, where the um, problem lies when religion came in is that, like you said, you give your whole energy to a being that you don't know called God. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't know who God is. It's, they say he's a spirit, etc. But what we teach is that God is a ghostational force, is a type of force, an entity that keeps you bind bind it into those um, forces that can control and sub subdue you. And in control and subduing you, when your soul is given over to a different force, okay, that soul can be taken and utilized. You see what I'm saying? While when you make a connection with your spiritual ancestors or your relatives who are transitioned, this is the being, that's why we give him reverence because he's the one that has incarnated in this 24,000 year cycle to resurrect our mental state and linking back with our ancestors. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about worshiping him, it's about the reverence that we give to him that with had, that, had it not been for him activating you by way of this information, your soul was to be asleep. While religion, what their job is to do, even though they're un unbeknown to them, is that they're to take your soul and give it to these extraterrestrials. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Um, and the second question is, I mean, I feel very strongly about this particular topic because um, when I was coming into my spirituality, going on my spiritual path, hmm. I just sort of questioned as to why, you know, why so much information had either been um, 
very usual mm. one that's so you know so it'll be fine it's very difficult to find mm. uh the truth mm. um and to understand you know be able to come across the truth and to be able to be aligned with it without being convoluted or changed mm. and that's sort of led me on the path to um to finding out more about you know Freemasonry and secret societies and how there's been a particular you know, there's been a very concerted effort to mm. keep information away from people that it would um and you know power mm-hmm. um and so I was quite surprised to see mm. on, on the, uh, the oh, website. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I wondered, you know, whether there was a particular, it was a kind of a re, it was a re um, claiming mm-hmm. of, you know, Egyptian orders and um, Eastern stars or things. That's right. Because it's on your website. That's right, yeah. Those are, so is, it, that, is that what it is? Literally, um, we are reclaiming, yeah, reclaiming, yeah. Reclaiming yeah. That. That's right. Because and how would you, how would you say to somebody, okay, turn away from this, because this, are people that musicians that I grew up, you know, that I'm not going to go into any yeah. detail. Okay. But just everyday regular people, musicians, mm-hmm. um, artists mm-hmm. that we wouldn't think that were, um, I guess, putting their energy into. Um, no, I'm trying to use my. <laughs> use my use word. Use, no, um, we're not going to be offended or anything. Trust me. But it's, it's not thing, about being I think offended. It's, it's very surprising to me uh, where one would choose to gain power in certain ways okay. as opposed to. Really helping their communities, right. being um, being a part of the community, and being um, sort of a bastion of empower- empowerment, mm-hmm. um, rather than I guess choose to follow I mm-hmm. guess I would just call them trinkets of the uh, material world. Right. Um, and how would you, you know, I think it's a really important thing because so many of our youth, I work with a lot of young people, mm-hmm. they're looking at these you know stars, these people that have they think that they have you know, a lot of wealth, mm-hmm. and they're giving a lot of um, yeah, that's what they aspire to be. Right. So how is I guess we about is you know by spreading the doctrine and by spreading the the teachings of, of Dr. Mark Pesci York. Mm. That is one. How else are we going to be able to get into the community and help young people to see that actually these people that are you you are mm-hmm. holding in high esteem, mm. they actually don't have you know they've the same, given them the, given your best interests at heart. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's a lot of a very. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's a lot of to unpack there. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna try and see if I can a- answer your question. And if I don't, I mean, there's always others that will um, you know, add to what I'm saying. Okay, so you mentioned about star, um, and stars and how our youth are idolizing these stars. Is that kind of like, in a nutshell, kind of thing? Yeah, and so why mm-hmm. it's a one, it seems to have got to a point where there's just so much now, and people that people that are just you know even regular business people, yeah. people that have their own businesses, right. like entrepreneurs, mm. they have decided to turn in you know turn um turn towards secret societies. To okay, be, right. So is it that moral aspect you're looking? Why why are they turn into these so called clandestine exactly, orders? Exactly. Yeah. And what can we do to identify those people? To because I feel very like. Yeah. I don't want anyone. I don't want really anything to do with someone that has really decided to give their energy and to gain energy from right. dark forces. Like right. I don't think it's um, obviously. Okay. A okay. Thing. Um, you see, there's orders. Orders were created for a reason. All right. And um, unfortunately, what's happened is disagreeable forces have entered into these orders. Do you see what I'm saying? So, if we're talking from the European standpoint of view. The Europeans under the Knights Templar, okay, um, and some Freemasonic orders, etc. The Luciferians also have orders. You with me? So there's Luciferian orders, and then there's orders that also are, lack of a better word, the orders of darkness. Because I use the word darkness not as a negative connotation, but in the sense that out of everything, out of all light. Okay, so darkness gave birth to light. Do you see what I'm saying? Everything exists in darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what's happened is we've been given a negative connotation of, about what darkness is. So when um, you're talking about these so called groups or whatever, and you think they're operating dark forces, it's not actually that they're, op- they're actually operating light forces. Why do I say that? When you look at the word Lucifer, mm-hmm. the word Lucifer means light bearer. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's his orders that have infiltrated into some of these orders that were made to actually raise a man to a certain level you see and then when you go and research you know about the illuminati then i take it do you know about the person who actually funded the illuminati okay 
His name was Adam Weishaupt. Okay, he was a um, a German Jew. You see what I'm saying? So he was of the Luciferian order. And what happened was that in Europe, this was in 1700s, he funded, okay, he funded a lot of the projects that allowed certain people like um, Albert Pike, he's an actual general who was also of the Luciferian order. And what they did was they infiltrated a lot of Masonic groups, you see what I'm saying, to spread their own control over this planet. You see what I'm saying? So that's why Freemasonry and other orders are looked upon as being negative, even though some are. Like, for instance, the Ku Klux Klan, they're actually an order, yeah, that operate on a negative way because they have Luciferians in their midst. You see what I'm saying? Now, in ancient Africa, we also had orders. And those orders was to raise a man to the point where, or uh, humanity, but initially males and females had orders. And these orders didn't come from this planet. They actually came from higher realms. So what, what, what we're teaching now is higher realm information. Mm. And our ancestors, when they came to this planet and they, they set up the different cultures on this planet, you have people like, I'll use the Greek terms for them, Osiris, that people are familiar with, mm. Isis, um, Horus, okay, these are the Greek names for them, all right, but they set up certain orders, and those orders, man was initiated into them to keep certain secrets, you understand, now those secrets, it's like, if those certain secrets of how to um, make do levitation, for instance, or how to um, build the pyramids, for instance, was given into the wrong hands, think of what they'll do with it, yeah, so it's like giving a, a child a loaded gun. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I really get it. I understand what you're saying. Okay. I do think that there is uh, the fact that we think, okay, no, you deserve this information, you don't deserve this information. Oh, is that the part you've got? I think that there's. <laughs> you got <laughs> yeah, issues with that? I, I kind of do. You do? Like, okay. They're not really. Can I, can um, I, can I ask you this? Sure. If, do you think you are worthy to have certain information? Because look at the military and the army for, or, or in any other organizations, yeah? They call it top secret and other reasons for a reason. Because if certain hands will take, got hold of this information, what they'll do with it. You see what I'm saying? You may be coming from a, a positive mindset and you may be, you may be able to utilize that knowledge for, for the purpose of humanity. And those are the people that within Freemasonry, we raising humanity's level. Do you see what I'm saying? So that in Freemasonry, that's that's thing to make good men better men, or to make humanity better. That's the job. Now, there's certain sciences that comes with that. So there was a being, that, or there is a being, who was known in ancient times as Hermes, the thrice great, Hermes Trimagistus. Mm -hmm. Okay, or another name for him will be Thoth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thoth was an incarnated um, avatar. Right, a supreme being that would incarnate and teach certain be people ma and, and make them masters. And the reason why he, the, the, these adepts became then from adepts to the to point where they become masters is because they will be able to utilize, they could be trusted now to utilize that information properly. My, I think my, my problem is, yeah. is that this idea of who can be trusted, who can't be trusted, we're kind of living in a situation yeah. where. There are a lot of people that can't be trusted with certain things that they're doing anyway. So I think I just believe in having open information. Right. So you, everyone has a frequency. Yeah. And I think your frequency is going to dictate how you use the information that you have. Mm. And if we are gatekeepers to that, yes. it's kind of we're, we're almost circumnavigating just what will happen naturally anyway. Like we have so much information. Mm -hmm. If you have a frequency of something resonating with you, mm -hmm. that's going to be your frequency resonating. True. And then you're going to be using that to then you know, hopefully do positive, positive things. things. That's right. Yeah. 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 So I just, I just don't, I just, I, you're, I, you're, you're thinking about frequency as always being positive. There's also negative frequency. Do you see what I'm saying? So like, mm -hmm. I'll go back to what I read in Patarak. Some were cast out from above and became known as Nephilim. There was, there was certain extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. Okay. That were cast here 
and they are your Luciferians. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? And they, what they've done is they've embedded themselves and weaved themselves into all facets of society. Mm -hmm. Even their symbols you see, but you don't wear that. That's their symbols. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So from those, that, that foundation that they've created, they've been able to confuse and manipulate humanity for thousands and thousands of years. It's not something that was just done the other day by um, the Freemasonic orders or anything like that. That was just an orders that was set up. Agreeable ones that will protect the truth. And those disagreeable ones who just will control the truth and manipulate others with the truth. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, so in the European ones, the reason why the European Freemasonry, they were only given a certain amount of information. Wow. Yeah. And we initiated them. That's what you need to remember. Yeah, we initiated them. And but we didn't give them all the um all the facts or the actual facts. We only gave them three degrees. Mm. Those three degrees is what you probably hear in Freemasonry, 33rd degree masonry and stuff like that. Yeah. So these Masonic um groups i.e. Um, that was established in, the, in in England, okay, what they done, they started to give out charters to other um, groups in America and other places, and they be, this became the Grand Lodge in Europe, okay? But within the Grand Lodge in Europe, even though they were taught by us as the Moors and as the ancient Egyptians, okay, what they did was, with those three degrees that they were able to have, <laughs> they were able to manipulate this planet, you see what I'm saying, and create religion, and create the different facets of religion, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, etc., which then binded people into believing in a, in a God, that God you call Lucifer. You see what I'm saying? And that same God that is in Revelations that's coming back is also Lucifer. His name is actually Nana. Yeah, but many people don't know this. Many people don't know that religion was created by extraterrestrials. You see what I'm saying? And this is where we have now revealed this by way of our master teacher, you see? So to, to, um, to answer also that who's responsible, you're now responsible to go out there because you're in that field of um, institution to help those children by teaching them about Wu Sabat in a way that it can be accepted, which is what I'm saying, in your environment. Because... The thing about Usabat is it's not just I've got knowledge, you see what I'm saying, and I'm good and I'm good. It's I have the knowledge now, it's my responsibility to now teach others and wake them up. You see, and, and, and another way of looking at it is like this. When just say you got your family in a in a house, you go travel somewhere, yeah, and it's and it's and it's, and it's pertinent and you get to this destination. Some of them are asleep and you You've been in that situation, in it? Hurry up, we're gonna get, we're gonna be late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us are asleep. Some of us are still in a slumber state. Some of us are fully awoke. Mm -hmm. And our job as the ones who are fully awoke is to then wake up those who are in a slumber state. There's those who are gonna be comatose. There's no, you know, I mean? there's no, some are gonna be so far asleep that they're not even gonna be interested in what you have to say and be late for the for the bus or the, the trip. Mm -hmm. You with me? And know that you have a destination. You see, that's the difference between fate and faith, yeah? Having faith in some unseen, proven God character and have, knowing your fate, your destination is what your ancestors are now trying to get you and gear you towards. And, and through the teachings, you start to realize that you're, you are a far more greater being than what you may take credit for. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and like you said, you, you, you're spiritual, but your soul... Is a it, your soul opens dimensions to other realms. Mm -hmm. Now, if a being knew that about you and knew that you weren't um, worthy of that, and then how can I prove that you're not worthy of that? I just like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Okay, you are worthy, <laughs> and we think otherwise. No, that's then that's. It means that you're, yeah, yeah it's it's your works that mm -hmm. makes you worthy. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and yes, there could be favoritism. Do you know what I mean? I could say to that person, yeah, I like the way he flexes. I like the way she does this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try and trust in her this. But that's not how it works when you're in a particular, when you're dealing with the sciences mm -hmm. of, of what ontology and quantum physics deals with. You with me? And, no, and knowing that your soul is not just a, a thing that makes you like music or create music. Your soul is a vehicle that can be transported and used on other dimensions. And it's like a sun. 
Your soul is like a sun. Mm-hmm. It's a miniature sun. That's what your soul is. Have you ever watched the movie um, Men in Black? Mm-hmm. Right. You remember you are a miniature galaxy. Remember the galaxy was in the that necklace of the cat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are actually a galaxy and you are Papa'ot. What does Papa'ot mean? It's, we said it in our affirmation. You are the all expanding. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now, if a being knew that you didn't know that, <laughs> but I can prove that you don't know that and I can make you so ignorant that at the end of it, I can take your soul. Naya, Sama. We have a few. Okay, just think on that. Don't fond on that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, my sister. Yeah. Who is it? Um, I have we answered Yolanda, and then Yolanda, the male be Sheldon, because I saw Sheldon with his hand up for a while. Okay. So uh, Yolanda says, "What happens to us after we die, in the other dimension? Do we reincarnate ourselves to come back again?" Okay. Um, what happens when you die is depending on how you've worked on your being will will determine what, how far you travel in the other realms. Okay. Cause earth is, earth is a school and our job is to perfect ourselves in this school and this journey. All right. And the way to perfect our being is to live according to the natural nature of your being, i.e., you know, we, we said it many times before, the meditations, um, the doing doing things for each other, the love of self, love of others, um, applying the doctrine of chanting, okay, meditating, those aspects um, all help, speaking your own language all helps in transforming yourself so that you can make the grade to travel into higher realms. So it all depends on how far in degrees you've raised yourself, okay? So as um, humanity, our job as Sabians is to teach humanity about these realities. And then it's down to you as an individual is to also apply the sciences. Like for instance, right? It, One of your discs at risk. Whether it's having to, it will continue. I don't know what that is. Um, Somebody's got their mic on, I'm afraid. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. So depending on um, the level and degree that you've raised yourself, will determine determine how far you go in your um, transition or transformation. So that's essentially it. Um, we have what is called a nine-day fast coming up in, sorry, just, um, right, we have a nine-day fast that's coming up, for instance, in the, in the, what's called a winter solstice, okay? That nine-day fast is to literally do chanting, meditate, etc., and develop your inner being. And in developing your inner being, you get stronger because you're feeding your spiritual forces that's inside you. So that nine day fast is to abstain from solid food and other um, things that will. Can someone, um, could you turn your mic off, please? Thank you. Yeah, so your, your job is to raise yourself in degrees in learning by studying Wusabat by applying the application of Usaba into your life, like let it literally into, be interwoven into who you are. Because in doing that, you raise yourself, you feed your spirit, which in turn strengthens your soul so that eventually when you do transition, you're able to move through the different realms because it's not just a single one-stop journey once you die and then you go to the heavenly realms and then you're then sent back. You will be sent back if you didn't perfect your being and then you have 24 to 24,000 years. The reason why 24 to 24,000 years is because your genetic makeup is linked to this planet, which is 20, which is on a 24,000 year cycle. Okay. And that cycle and the actual um, 24,000 is actually linked into your genome, your genetic makeup. 
So that's why in this earthly realm, the spiritual realm, is that you have the 24,000 cycles in order to perfect your being. Once you perfected your being, then you could move on to another cycle where you either be sent here to either do a complete a mission or you be moved on to a different place in a different realm to also learn something there. And it's a continuous learning of your soul until you become a supreme being, to be able to be worthy to traverse the different um, realities, as it were, the different dimensions. But it all starts here. So Earth is a school. And, that's, and, and within this school, you're supposed to learn what you're supposed to find out what you're supposed to learn. And once you've learned it, you help others also learn what they're supposed to learn. So it's a continuous thing. It's not just me, myself, and I. Once you become part of all, you help all. You are part of all, the all expanding. So that's what you have to realize that you are part of all and all is. Okay? So I hope that answers that question. Um, there's another question. Yeah, Sheldon. Sheldon had his hand up for a while. Okay, Sheldon, I, do you want to I, ask Sheldon. a question? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Greetings. I can hear you, Sheldon, loud and clear. Greetings. <clears throat> um, a few months back, I was meditating, and uh, deep into the meditation, I felt someone touch my shoulder or something, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, it felt rather comforting, if I'm honest. It felt as if they, as if they were supporting me through the meditation. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, is there, do you know who touched me? <laughs> who touched me? Um, unfortunately, no, Sheldon. I no. can't tell you who touched you. What I can explain to you is that you yeah. have relatives that can come and visit you. Mm. You understand? And sometimes you may feel a presence in the room, or you might feel a touch or something, an impression or energy in the room which will alert you to the reality that there is something beyond this realm. You understand? But I can't tell you who touched you uh, or what, you know, why they touched you, etc. So essentially, your link to every relative that is in your gene pool. Yeah. So when you're when you well, when um our parents gave birth to us. We, we were spiritually linked to all their ancestors. Mm. Your son. And depending on the transition of a relative, that relative can come to you and pass on a message or visit you for other various reasons. But you have to be aware of that. So but I can't tell you who specifically it was. But you can tell me that it was more than likely a relative. It's, it's, it's the presence that you may feel it could, it could be, that's what I'm saying, we don't really like going into, um, what's the word? Speculation. Mm. We speculate. What we say is that you have multiple things. You can have a relative can come and visit you. You can mm. have certain beings can come and visit you. Yeah, because you're, you're a, a, an, in essence, an energy being that's tapped into the multi multiple dimensions. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So because you're tapped into multiple dimensions, depending on your meditative state and how far your vibrational was, your vibration could also resonate with the same vibration of that dimension. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you make a portal or an open door that allows that being or entity to come near you. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you're the temple. Your body is the temple. And then what you place on the altar of that temple is, is dependent on your frequency and your vibration. So if you were in a positive state, beings in a positive vibration that resonate with your energy can come to you. If you're in a negative state, this likewise, the same thing can happen. Okay. Um, can I ask a second question? Of course you can. Um, I know we don't really deal with believing and speculation. Mm -hmm. So, am I correct in saying that <clears throat> every everyone knows better in regards to the decisions they make? Because some people might find themselves in a situation where their leg doesn't work anymore, their knee doesn't work, their hip doesn't work, they're overweight, or 
bit out of work because they've consistently kept on making the wrong decisions and now they're in a bad situation. And I want to know if, am I correct in saying that these people always had, or I would like to believe, but I could stand to be corrected because these people might not have a soul anymore, that they didn't hear the voice telling them that they should probably stop what it is they're doing. Because to be quite frank, when I see people in these situations, I feel it really hard to feel bad for them because mm. I'd like to believe that this has happened to you because you ignored the signs for mm. so long that you had to change. Mm. Maybe they were gambling and now they've lost their family and their house or it mm. could be anything. Mm. So am I correct in saying that they that they heard the voice? They just decided to ignore it and now they are where they are. That's part of it. That is definitely part of it because your oversoul that either either part aspect of you communicates to you. But yeah? what? And and your your soul and your spirit. This I'm gonna read again. Okay, you have the um etheric being, mm. you have the breath of life which animates you, you have the living being, and you also have the creative expressional you. Okay, so you have different aspects of, of your existence. Some do not have the ba'a, you're right. Okay, but some do have the ka'a, or, or everybody has the ka'a, should I say, right? And that, that ka'a, the exoplasmic being, is all li it's also linked into the mental reservoir or um, the mind. So the mind has also, it's also connected to your ancestors. So by way of your ancestors, they can communicate to you also if you're doing something irresponsible in mm. your life, okay? And like you said, you can either choose to ex uh, um, acknowledge that inner voice that's speaking to you or ignore that inner voice. But the rules of natural nature says this. If you go against your natural nature, nature will always find a balance. Yeah, so the manifestation of that balance is what you've just explained. You you know, um, certain situations you end up in mm. where your life is not going the way it's supposed to go because you're not, you fail to listen to the inner voice or a relative who's trying to communicate to you or in the, in the sense of that, somebody who has a soul, that conscious aspect of you, that conscious being, that caring, nurture being, that creative expressional being, you've, lo you've literally um, suppressed it. And in suppressing it, it slowly starts to fade away. And then what's happening is that it starts to trickle away. The energy of the soul starts to trickle away. And then you start to then become living in the image and likeness of something other than yourself. Can they get that soul back? You can restore your soul. Okay. Yes, your soul can be restored. You know, And it's all about, about what I mentioned earlier, you know, chanting, meditating, fasting, you know, communicating with others in the same type of energy as you are, you know, gathering together. These things reactivate your soul. That's, okay. that's, that's one of the reasons why we do our chants, etc. because it's like a spark. Yeah? Mm. So imagine, imagine like electricity. Electricity can, can you know, um, move fluidly if you always activate it. But if it if it's, needs a spark, that spark can be ignited. And this again goes back to what we're teaching Wu Sabat. When you came across Wu Sabat, you had what we refer to as a DNA explosion. Okay. And that DNA explosion, because you had a, a, a spark of knowledge or affirmation or something in your genes that was asleep. And then that sparked you off. And the soul began to awaken. Okay. And that Ba'a started to awaken and that conscious you started to take over the spirit of you because most of the time most of us are operating on just spirit and the spirit is the self-centered part of you is the part of you that's the selfish part of you mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying and it feeds on the lower um lower desires you know it's all about me myself and i you know, I want this, I want that. And it links in with the ego. But once you um, start to live by soul, you don't think about just yourself. You think about everyone who's around you and how you can make everybody better. 
So now you're living by the principles of the soul. And in doing that is through the um, different practices and rituals that will keep your soul much more brighter and allows you that easy access to those ancestors or relatives who exist in the other dimensions. Because then you've now opened up a conduit or a gateway for them to be able to communicate to you easier. Mm. You see? But it, we operate, soul operates on, on not the single, but the not the individual, but the whole. That's what soul operates on. So I don't think about myself. I think about how my brothers and sisters are going to benefit from what I do. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, and this is where we're living on the principle of soul. Oh, when, 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 when I when I when I have something, I share it with my brothers and sisters. I'm my bro I am my brother and sister's keeper. It's no longer about well, boy, you know what? It's it's just me. I got my house. I got my car. Do you know what I mean? I got my family, and that's it. And that we're we're good. Yeah, or that, that's it. Yolo. You only live once. Do you see what I'm saying? Those aspects mm. doesn't work with the soul. The soul is about how am I going to reach and make this world a better place? How am I going to do this? Leave a lasting legacy for others to also operate on and live off of. That's what the soul operates on. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I should start listening to it. Yeah, it's loud. I won't tell you. It's loud. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a loud it's a loud voice, yeah. but we call it the inner voice. Mm. Me. Yeah, but it's actually a very loud voice. And one of the things the master teacher explained is, when you do that, if you suppress or ignore the inner voice, you're violating the principle of natural nature, Wu Sabak. What, what Wu Nawapu represents is that you are supposed to be a centered being, okay, that is constantly um, operating on non-selfishness. Mm. And, and this is what leads into what we call, um, what we keep teaching people should have, our shock. That's why we say our shock, because our shock is unconditional love. You but see? saying that now, going back to the people I was talking about where they may have lost their soul and they consistently keep making those wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. I know in Wusabat, you should, it's about love and caring. Mm. But what happens when you find it so difficult to, what happens when you just see these people as just <laughs> disagreeable beings and like you, you can't be asked to them? You've, you've tried, you've tried. Mm. Well, if if you if you tried, then you you leave them and, and carry on practicing Wu Sabat, because it's not about trying to force somebody into Wu Sabat. It's not a religion or anything. We give you the the um, materials, yeah, and the knowledge, etc. And then we what you do is you apply it to your life. Yeah, some people it doesn't resonate with them because one thing we do say in Wu Sabat is a genetic doctrine. Yeah, it's all about your genes. And what you have to also remember, okay, when, when all of these things are going on in your life and these other um, um, circumstances take place is because you have a scrambled of genes in your genetics. Remember, it's not just you, it's your relatives. And then if you're going into what is called epigenetics, epigenetics is talking also about thousands of years of different beings that are also in your genes because your genes is not just one surface okay your genes is connected to multiple dimensions and with with the dna being connected to multiple dimensions you have various beings extraterrestrials and human beings that are in your dna mm. You see what I'm saying? And it goes beyond 400 years when we were, you know, um, kidnapped and brought into different parts of the world and we lost our identity. You're talking about multiple beings, ancestors, extraterrestrials that are operating within, within us. So one of the things that the master teacher is doing is he's actually giving us all these realities that within your, your very fiber of your being, your being is an energy matrix. OK, it's an energy matrix and that energy matrix expands is it's, it's a boundless. However, when you is being confined to a three dimensional reality, uh, but it's still linked to the universe. Mm. These different dimensions of the universe, depending on what vibrational level you're on, these entities can operate within you and influence and 
um, affect your life. Is it possible for the dis? So I'd imagine it's possible for the disagreeable and agreeable to be in you at the same time, having their own war, having their own that's, fight. That's the conflict. Okay, because that, that seems normal to me. Yeah. Like, so honestly. I'm going to give you an example of a simple thing. Yeah, just say, for instance, you're asked to do something by your relative or some like I don't know, maybe just go down the road. This is very simple. Go down the road and buy me something. You're like. I don't want to go down and, and buy her this man. Why do I have to go in my pocket all the time and go and buy her things? She's always asking for stuff, or he's always asking for stuff. Every time he calls me, that there, you're operating on six ether. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. you're operating on a negative vibe. Because now you're complaining and your energy matrix is actually changing. You may not realize what's happening, but that's so if if for instance you knew it's within your power to go down the road and get this um, thing for your relative or whatever the case may be, and you did it, what was the harm? Mm. You see what I'm saying? But the egotistical aspect of us, which are the relatives and these other, um, what is called, um, the master give it, elementals. There's certain beings known as elementals that are around us. So we need to start thinking about these energy beings, okay, that, that can see our mental state and what kind of disposition or energy we're in, you know what I mean? If we're agitated, et cetera, or we have ill feelings or bad feelings towards somebody, they can actually influence and affect your life. Mm -hmm. You That's see, so, so, bad, so, yeah. so you must always be on a constant, certain vibrational frequency. Hence, why <laughs> we say learn Bu Sabat, learn the language, learn the chanting, Mm -hmm. Learn about your ancestors, call on your ancestors. If you feel there's a negative thought coming, call on an ancestor or do something that would be positive to replace the negative. That's living within Wu Sabat. With that being said about mm -hmm. uh, the six ephah and the negative feelings and thoughts, mm -hmm. how quick can you go from the nine to the six in regards to feeling positive or negative? That same... Very, very quick. <laughs> very quick. So very quick because it's a, it's a mental switch. The mental changing. So as soon as I make the mental change to feeling positive rather than negative, yep. it's that simple. It can happen within seconds, you're saying. Yeah, because your mind is working at 24,000, 24 billion uh, miles per second. That's how fast your mind works. The master explained that our mind works in a moment while others work in a second. Like the Europeans or Mukasu or the Caucasian race, their mind doesn't work in moments. That's why they have a, that we have a first we have a second, but they work operate on the second. You see what I'm saying? Mm. We work on the first or the moment. So the moment of a thought comes into your mind where it's a negative, replace it with a positive. Immediately. Sure. Mm. It's, like, it's like deciding to become a Sabian, for instance. People think it's hard, and, and I'm not gonna try, I'm not trying to convince anybody to become Sabian. What I'm saying is that what seems hard is actually easy. It seems hard because we have these conflicts and we have to be able to overcome those conflicts. And the way to overcome those conflicts is learning to trust who we are, learning to trust and accept that our ancestors are real and that they do operate and influence and affect our lives for the good and for the negative, depending on which ones you're leaning towards. Okay. You see, we, we remember... Wusabat is an ancient African spiritual doctrine, okay? It didn't come from this planet. It came from the stars. You are a star being. What's happened as a star being is that you've incarnated here through various different reasons, and you're trapped here. Mm -hmm. And your job is to return back to your origin. That's what this being has incarnated to show you. He's saying you're not of this realm. You're trapped in this room because of your mental state. And then other beings have literally uh, manipulated, yeah, manipulated your existence while being here in this trapped state. Because we never used, we didn't die. We just transformed and then we left this realm and went to other realms to do other things. But then what happened was we got trapped here. You're in an entrapment. And sometimes we actually create those entrapments ourselves. Mm. 
So now we've got a few more questions okay. on Zoom. You got any? Did you want to? Um, do you want to wrap it up there? You happy with the answers? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No worries. You're welcome. Um, go ahead, my sister. Um, see if there's anything in. Is there in um what what group are we talking? We talking Clubhouse? Okay. So Zoom. Um, I think this is Judy. Okay. How do I determine how much of my identity is shaped by eternal influence? And how do I determine my most authentic self? <laughs> I, um, is it Judy, yeah? Tua. Yeah, Judy. Um, I, I can't give you an answer about how to determine that. You would have to gauge that in accordance with the actions that you take every day in your life. Yeah, so if you are mindful of the things that you do in your day-to-day -day existence, okay, you'll be able to gauge what's working for you and what's not working for you. You understand? So it's, it's, it's a different glove. It's not one glove fits all approach. You're a different being to me in the sense that as an individual in this realm, okay, there's certain practices that you can apply to your life that helps you and propels you forward and connects with your ancestors and relatives and connects with natural nature. You with me? We have certain rituals and practices. So for instance, nine, three, and nine, if you have the ability to do your chants, if, if, if you're still, if you're familiar with the chanting um, rituals that we do, there's a nine, three, nine chant that we do, which helps us align with natural nature on a daily basis. You with me? So in doing these aspects, when you a thought comes to you, for instance, and it, it manifests itself, i.e. like, for instance, you may think of somebody, okay, and that person calls, calls and he's like, I was just thinking about you. That is an actual power called mental um, telepathy. So now with that mental telepathy, you just work on it, hone in on it, you see what I'm saying, and manipulate it and let it work for you, yeah? Likewise, if you're able to heal yourself, because you can heal yourself, you can heal certain aspects of your, of, of your being, along with the help of obviously medical stuff, but you can actually heal certain ailments that's going on. You with me? And it's, we have practice for that. You know, we have a, a blue candle and, and you do certain chants, etc. that you can actually, there's actual, um, a, the master teacher has given a guide for that. There's also other things that you can do in a sense of fasting, which then recalibrates your genetic DNA. So there's, and, and I said, as I stressed before, and the master's always stressed, is the language. Once we speak our language, that will break down a lot of the problems and issues that we have because language is the key to um, us being unified. Yeah, because if we're all speaking and resonating on the same frequency, we won't have many of these conflicts because we'll all understand each other because we're all operating on the same tone. You with me? So the language is very poor. So ancient African spiritual science, who's, what Wusaba is, is advocating this. You with me? But I stress, we're not here to force you to do it. We're not asking you to for any money or anything. We're not going to keep give you a guilt trip. You with me? That we all tend to have in all of these other aspects is for you to find how it works for you and live through Wu Sabat in your best possible way until you can find a more conducive environment. Because right now, we're, none of us are in, a, in our true conducive environment, which is originally Africa. Do you see what I'm saying? That's where we all came from. And really and truly, our job is to actually make the transition back to Africa eventually. Even if you teach your children, it's not you, it's your children's children, but eventually the goal is to go back and live in our own land, okay? So I hope that answers that question. Any other questions? Yeah? Yes. Um, sorry, Zamal. Um, Judy's oh, oh, question okay. is three part. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go on. <laughs> go on, tell us about that. She, she goes on um, to say, how do um, embody my soul needs and wants and what is free will in a world controlled by the one percent how do you so say the first one, how do you embody uh let's see sorry uh 
it reads how do embody my i think she's saying how do i embody my soul um needs and wants okay and then the last bit is what is free will in a world controlled by the one percent okay needs needs and wants okay so i mentioned to you or i stated earlier that we have two operating um, f factors going on. Your soul is unselfish. You with me? The spirit is the selfish aspect of you. Okay? And the spirit aspect of you is what, and, and your animal part of you, which is your body, is what has the connection to the needs and wants. Okay? So it needs to be fed. It needs to be um, uh, accepted. It needs all of these things. That's coupled with the ego. When you're dealing with the, the true essence of you, okay, those, those needs and wants are much more um, on a group level. You see what I'm saying? You need to operate on a group level where everybody benefits. Okay, so embodying that in, in what Wusaba embodies is that our job is to make everybody benefit from living for and of by each other yeah just like again going back to all other races on the planet and all other societies is that when we live for and of by each other when we're buying and doing things in according to who we are as a race of people that's what's gonna keep us in that soul unity okay that soul connection but if you're operating off your just your needs and your wants that's your desires you're feeding on your desires and desires is what leads to what the master's broken down leads to suffering because you desire something nobody somebody doesn't fulfill it for you and then automatically you're angry or upset with that person because they didn't fulfill your desires or they didn't fulfill your expectations etc so it's not about that it's more about the fact that you recognize that what we as a people need what can we all achieve together you know and that's what we we will keep talking about love and unity love and unity because once we're unified unified with the mental state etc that in itself will transform us and propel us to building these great civilizations that our ancestors left here thousands of years ago yeah because we we do talk about it we're all proud yeah think about it this way we're all proud of the civilizations we're all proud about how great our ancestors were but check this that's you so why can't you rebuild that again? Our ancestors never lived in disunity. They lived in unity and love for each other. So that's what we're practicing in Wusabat. So the easiest journey for you to make is embrace what we're teaching when your journey is right, when it feels right for you. So I'm not going to stress that. Just embrace it, believe in it, et cetera. You know, have faith. We don't do none of those things. If it works for you and if it's genetically something that you resonate with, then work towards becoming part of it. You with me? As we, our affirmation says, I'm a part of all and all is a part of me. I'm one with the all and all is one with me. I can fail as an individual. I can be all that I wish to be in the all as long as my wish is to stay in all. Okay, all, all expanding. So we are trying to get everybody to understand that principle that is unity and love that will one, free the master teacher, and two, free us, okay, and build these great civilizations again. All right. So, yeah, don't we, we if we feed the forces, then we're feeding our needs and our desires. Okay. And the way to overcome that is not to think about self, where the word selfish comes from. Okay. Um, any other question before I move on? Oh, and there was a last part again. What's the last part, Zamata? Was uh, what free will? What free will? Free will in a world controlled by one percent. Okay, um, free will. Right now, we have we don't really have free will because everything has been pretty much selected, and we've given multiple options. You with me? The way to have free will is to have mental liberation. Once you have mental liberation then you have free will operating off of 
deciding to become something other than what they've given you as multiple choice, i.e. if somebody's religious, they give you three choices, multiple choices, Islam, Judaism, Christianity in the Western world. Somebody asks you, which one are you? You say, oh, I'm a Muslim. But who really chose that for you? It was really pre, it was really made. It was really multi, if they give you multiple choice, one of your ancestors or relatives was in that religion because of choice. It wasn't something that they um, decided off of free will. It was something that was um, indoctrinated into them. And then from that, you then came, were born in it. Now, Busabat's here, and the free will that you have is mentally liberating yourself and deciding to go on the journey and linking in back of your ancestors. That's the ontology, that's the animism of Wusabat. Because when somebody asks you now, what's a Sabian? They can't define what Sabian is. You're the one that made that choice to become something that they cannot define. They didn't give you that title. Every other thing was named. And you can read this in your Genesis story when it talks about Adam was told to name everything. That was your Adamites. Your Adamites who are from, you know, a mixture of, as we explained earlier, your Hindus all the way down, and then they lost their genetic, um, how can I say, became leprous as snow, and the, the genes changed into becoming who you see today as your Canaanites or your Caucasians. Okay, of different hues. So from that, they have decided to call and name everything. So when they say, oh, you're African. Oh, you're um, Brazilian. Oh, you're from the Caribbean. Oh, you're Jamaican. Oh, you're... these are all titles given to us by them. So we actually have had no um, true will to decide for ourselves who we are. So when you say I'm a Sabian, they don't know the definition of that. Go and say to somebody, so I said, what's that? What's, what's Sabian? So they have to come to you now to get the definition of what Sabian means. Okay, and that's your free will because you're now mentally liberated. I hope that makes sense. I will let that mar marinate for a bit. Yes, my sister. <laughs> um. Sorry. Um, so I wanted to ask, you see how when we're going through certain things, we can call on our ancestors to help us, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, um, and um, kind of help us come into a more agreeable space, like more on their level. Um, can that be done in the sense of uh, the other way around? In the sense of if you feel like the environment or you feel like the energy around you is becoming extremely disagreeable and you feel like it may have to do with, say, your ancestry line, say, if um, somebody lived a certain life and you have like a belief that in their passing they were have become or were disagreeable. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, because they are part of your ancestry line, therefore they are a part of you. Mm -hmm. Would it be relevant for you to? be able to get in contact with them in order to try to either help shift their disagreeable energy or to at least uh, try to get rid of the hold that they have as part of your bloodline. Whew, that's a loaded one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a loaded question. Um, well, ultimately, we are com a composition of all our ancestors. You with me? So when you develop yourself, when you educate yourself, when you take yourself to the next level of understanding, et cetera, they're also learning too. You see what I'm saying? When you shift your frequency to a more positive vibration, remember the etheric realm is, is all you got to think of energy. Yeah. So if you look at a cell in a human body, the cell of a human body does not operate by itself. It operates in a group. You with me? And when that cell starts to die, it affects all the other cells. If the cell is in a homeostasis and in a vibratory state, then all the other cells will also benefit. You with me? So just as you, you are in your um, genetic pool, known as the morphic field, that morphic field, you're connected to all of them. So as you raise yourself in degrees and, and vibration, you're also helping them get stronger. Do you with me? Mm -hmm. And... Remember what the master uh, has explained, um, for those who haven't read the book, it's called Feeding the Forces. 
okay, in feeding of forces, they're also trapped. Do you, you understand? And because they're trapped, they need you as that strong force or that strong energy, that being, to help them out of the muck and mire because they're also being persecuted and what they call purgatory. They're also being afflicted in that realm by disembodied en energies or different disembodied spirit forces, which, which have trapped them. So through you, they will learn and get stronger. And when they get stronger, they'll be able to move through the different dimensions and then be able to assist you. Okay? So that's how, that's how it works. And that's how people fall. Any other questions? Okay, greetings. Who am I speaking to? This is it, Rahubad. Rahubad. Okay, so real quick, I want to first and foremost say um, thank you to the people that are asking questions. Because what happens is that as people do become more and more exposed to things, it'll start bringing up things within other people. And hmm. when you're in a group of people who are like minded and who are working through those things, you never know how that impacts. You know what I mean? So thank you for that for everybody who's asked questions. The next piece would be the gentleman who was talking about um, the people who know better and are not doing better. Mm -hmm. and correct me with this one where, where I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. But what I'm also thinking is that if you're one of these chosen out of your group who's been contacted to, you know, kind of help out the, 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 uh, the entities on that are passed on through your epigenetics and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. There's a certain level of focus that comes with that, but keep you can have somebody who has that soul that's like, I want to do what I can to help us, but you can be born to parents who are operating in spirit. So that soul would have to move through that spiritual encounter and figure out and figure this out. Whereas some people they're being groomed like this from the beginning. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So I just wanted to chime in with that piece to it because mm -hmm. if it's like, hey. If nobody's training, you're going to have to go through emotions. Maybe, or let me say, let me say it this way: If you're not being um, positioned and taught these things earlier on, and the majority of the people around you are operating in spirit, but you've been chosen, you have to figure that out first. Mm -hmm. You have to know who you are. You have to know what you're here for. You have to figure all that out. Mm -hmm. and you may have to figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. So, what might look like this person is tripping and stumbling and fumbling. And all these things more often than others that may just be them going through the, their paces mm. to become, you know, saying to operate in their full capacity. So I just wanted to put that out there. If I'm mistaken, please let me know. No, no, I'm Ed. Not, no, no, not at all, Ed. It's um, like you said, each one teach one. You know, we're all here as learning vessels because because ultimately we're actually one being. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We're actually one being, and because of fragmentation. We've been split into different individual beings operating on different individual um, existence. But ultimately, when we pull all together, there's a movie that the master stressed for us to watch, and he stressed it for a reason. It's called The Dark Crystal. It's a very old movie. It's got puppets in it, so it may seem like it's a bit weird. But in the movie, The Dark Crystal, there's two types of entities. One of them was agreeable. One of them was disagreeable. And what it, now I don't want to spoil it for you, but essentially the dark crystal is that it was a energy that bound, binded them together to become one being with me. So in the movie, the masters explain that you, we are just, all we are, are just fractals of one being. We are, we are soul. We are one soul. The African being is just one soul. Yeah, and, and from that one soul, multiple incarnations has happened where we've been defragmented into these sim simple individuals, you with me, and we have a life born through generations of, of ancestors. But ultimately, we're one being. So yes, we will come and manifest at different cycles in this um, current cycle that we're in, but our job is to help raise one another to the point where we're all united and then make a transition together. Not everybody is going to make the grade. That's a fact. Some are going to be left behind. But those who are strong 
and those who have made um, want to make that grade, you see what I'm saying? Then we have to work together and help each other make it to that point. So yeah, I, I benefit from you saying what you're saying and some people haven't learned what they're supposed to learn, but the impact of words from what I may say or from what somebody may say in the audience today, it will trigger a genetic expression in them which will then allow them to understand why they're here, what they have to do, et cetera. And like I said, when you choose this path as a Sabian, you with me, and you start to realize how powerful we are as one race. I mean, so many authors, musicians, orators, linguists, scientists have said it so many times, Unity is all about our unity because they've always known that unity is our power. Yeah. What we didn't weren't aware of is that we have been mixed in, not just with extraterrestrials, but when you bring it down to the um, level of being kidnapped, they mix, they tied into our genes, into our vine. They've tied, you know, in the vines of the genes of the African woman. An African man or the Sabian woman, the Sabian man, etc., the Nagarus race, we have got other multiple extraterrestrials and Caucasians and other races that have tied into our genes. So the conflict is within the genes. So what's the cure? Yeah, everybody's been asking, we need this, we need that, we need to unify. But what's the cure to unity? Well, the cure to unity is that a bean has come and said, this is the cure to unity. You and me, study these books, do these things, and you will be unified. Hard to comprehend, hard to swallow, because it's a bitter pill to swallow. It means changing your habits, changing your diet, get, you know, er your, eradicating yourself from different um, um, friends and family members that you may not agree with. You with me? Um, I can say standing upright in society. There's a lot of thing that comes with Wu Sabat because it's a responsible doctrine. It's not a doctrine where you can just hide in the corner, even though some do, do you see what I'm saying? But it's, it's a doctrine where you have to, that light that's inside you has to shine. You with me? It's a motivator. That's what nine ether is. Nine ether is an activator and a motivator. It's supposed to motivate you and activate you to do the right things for one, your race, and then humanity, and then the planet. Okay, so if we're able to understand that, that we're one being, one race of people, we're mentally liberated, and it is happening because the cycle that we're in now, we've moved out of the ghost cycle or the moon cycle, we're now in the sun cycle. So you're going to see a lot more people gravitating towards Rusabat or just learning about their conscious self. So it is happening. However, there's still a lot of work to do and there's only a few of us that are actually operating on that vibration. The more of us that do it, the more classes that we have consistently, you know, um, reaching out to other people in the rest of the world, you know, it will happen because as 6,000 um, cycles starts to take place and the sun cycles in, what's happening is there's, a, there's an actual shift um, from the east to the west, which is um, Africa. So there's an actual, what is known as a, um, a cycle. And that cycle is that the energy is gonna shift from the eastern re region or the northern, north to east region down to the west, okay, and south. And within that, that um, energy, certain children of, or melanite children are just gonna naturally wake up. Eventually, majority of people are just going to wake up anyway, but it's our job because we are known as the ones that were risen, risen first. That's another name why it's known as Atumre, okay? First begotten of the dead. The reason why it's not the dead as in, you know, killed, dead, not alive, but in the dead as mentally asleep, okay? So he was the first one that was woken up or risen, okay? The first begotten. And then from his job, he, as an as an ethereal energy is supposed to then light up other suns. Because if, if you understand how quantum physics works, is that when a sun is born, a sun will send out ethereal lightning and create other orbs 
okay, planets and other suns, and then it'll create a universe. So essentially, that's what Atom Ray is. He's connecting you back to who you really are, the true source of all existence, which is gods. That's what you are, you're gods, you know, at the end of it. Just, yeah, I can't say anymore. We're just supreme beings, you know, and but we have to re recognize what that means and the responsibility that comes with it. The market had not come to Zoom and a few oh, questions. I appreciate that the um, Dark Crystals thing is big. It was out a while ago. They may have done a remake of it. Oh, really? Okay. I used, watch, I, I used to watch it when I was younger. I had no idea what I was watching. Same thing with Never Ending Story. Same yeah. thing with a couple other. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Short, yeah, we're basically supposed to be complementing each other as we all have different areas. Of strength and opportunity exactly which is why we don't really have time to really compromise each other in the sense of, of detriment so exactly. I'll with that. thank you for your response you're most welcome that's right okay um is it patricia harper hi patricia do you have a question yes yes i do hi there. greetings greetings, greetings. Mm, um i just want to clear something oh. up mm -hmm. um, my grandmother Mm -hmm. was a staunch Christian and before her pass she before her passing she never changed she continued like that until she passed over mm. now um going by what you've said earlier and what other members or other participants have have been talking about um in raising in me raising my frequency Mm -hmm. And because she's part part of my genes, mm -hmm. does that mean that will also help her in the spirit realm? In yeah, um, yeah, um, yes. I mean, in order to answer your question um, without cutting you, um, yes, it's it's literally okay. You if if you have children, right? If you have children, or those who have children. You want to impart on them as much knowledge as you have, you have, okay? And imparting that knowledge on them, you hope that little part of knowledge, it sticks with them, all right? And in, in order for them, because then what happens is when that child grows up, they start to remember you. They remember you and they remember, oh, this is what mom or dad or uncle or whatever used to show me. And now I, I remember it. I, you know, you start to even quote things that your grandparents have said to you, you know, certain words and certain phrases. What I'm saying is that the remembrance and the studying and the learning that was imparted on you, okay, helped you to be stronger. You with me? Helped you so that you can move and navigate through life. So as you get stronger, your spiritual and your mental state is also stronger. Likewise, the, the, the link that you have, the energy link, the ether link that you have with a relative works the same way because you're you're learning you're also gaining strength because you're fasting you're also gaining strength because you're doing these certain things which natural nature advocates that you're supposed to do as a natural nature being you're also gaining strength and mental abilities okay in doing that that ether link you have for them gets stronger and in that getting stronger, you're then they are able to communicate to you or assist you in your life. OK, and it could be any multiple different things. It's not just that particular individual, but you're getting stronger. The strength that you have also um, resonates and emanates to those that are also in your genetic gene pool, your morphogenetic field. That's that's how it works. OK, so that's why I was giving you the analogy of the cell in your body. Your cell doesn't just operate as just one entity. If you understand how cells work and how DNA works, cells communicate with other cells. You with me? And if that cell is um, vibrating and, and is energetic and is healthy, it will also send that same resonant frequency to all the other cells. This is why, again, going back to the music and the chants and the, and the tones that we use, the F, A, and C, um, if you're not familiar with it, we have three different tones that is natural to the African race. And that's the F major, 
A major and C major, okay? F is to do with your natural nature of this realm and this universe and nature. C is to do with the cosmic elements and the cosmic realm, okay? Different dimensions. Then you have the A and the A is the body's natural tone. So what the master has taught us is that we have to find a natural instrument. That natural instrument is referred to as the harmonium, okay? Or natural wood instrument. And that natural wood instrument, it will that note that it plays or resonates, you are also to hum or chant in that tone. So we do our chants in the tone of C or the tone of A or the tone of F, okay? And, in, and together it creates harmony. Now, when you research about the harmony of cells in the body, it, because it has to resonate at a particular level and a particular frequency, which bring harmony. What's harmony? Harmony, look at the word hormone and harmony. It secretes certain hormones in your body, which keeps you in a in a in a state of um it keeps you in a well, in a harmonious state, in a healthy state, and also connects you with natural nature. So this is the reason why we have these tones, and that's the reason why the language is so important because what the language is doing is, is keeping you on that frequency at, at all times. And when you again study language. Language is the key to your reality. So when, for instance, you're speaking Ms. Bhatia, you're also opening up your language and your brain centers and accessing universal information because now you're opening certain brain centers that have been laying dormant because of the English language that we've been speaking. So all of these factors that are happening, even though you may not be aware of it on the physical level, is happening on the etheric level and the spiritual level, which as you get stronger, your ancestors and your relatives also get stronger. And the more you call on them, it's like picking up the phone and dialing and they pick up straight away and they're able to help you. So that's how important it is for us as a people. So I hope that answers your question. Definitely, yes, completely. Okay. Um, how do I say thank you in the language? Because one of the things that I'm aware of mm. is beginning to change my language. Okay. So it's it saying thank you. Mm -hmm. Was the okay? You have you have two um, ways. You have tawat, which means thanks. If you want to say thank you to a male, is tau tak. Yeah, that's to a male, and then tau tat. To a female and there's a reason for the tat and the tat because the tat is it's symbolic of two x's and the x represents the chromosomes of a female the female is a complete being she has 360 complete and the chromosomes on the tip of every chromosome you have something called um what's the word i've been using such a long time um can someone help me here what? Oh, is it telomeres. Called telomeres? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so these telomeres <laughs> that are on the chromosomes of the female, she's able to access certain information and she's also able to live longer, etc., than the male. So we have actually got 270 telomeres, uh, um, what should we call it, X and Y. When you look at the X and Y, it's actually composed of 270. It's not 360 because of what happened in the when she created us there was a certain portion that was then removed, okay, which was the a genetic, um, what's the word? Rudimentary parts. So hence we have certain parts of our bodies that we don't use, it's, it's, not, it's not functional. You know, while the female uses all her body complete. And then you have the name, um, I'm just expounding on what um, the, your answer, but your question, yeah. you have something called- um, So you Zamal, I'm barely hearing you. Okay, when when you have the word mother, for instance, you're saying two type of things here. You're saying it's an acronym. Okay, you're saying M, and in the in the um, ancient text, the M in stood for a thousand. Okay, because a thousand represented gigabyte, and that giga deals with energy and wattage energy. So she's a thousand gigabytes of energy. She's a perfect being. And 
The other is dealing with when she grows a child in her womb, that becomes the other, which we as a race, as, as men, don't have the ability to know what re, um, growth is or creation is because she actually grows in her womb a child and then she pushes out. So that becomes the other. And then the M is the complete being. So you have the words together, you make mother. Okay, so that's where actually the word mother is coming from. So this complete being as the female is very important in our culture as Sabians. All right, so just to expound more on, on um, that particular question and take it to somewhere else. So it may spark some questions. All right. Tawu, so it's Tawu. Tawu, Tak, and Tawu, Tat. So male, Tak with a K, and Tat, female. The T. Kau tak. Yeah. And tat at the are four. That means you are welcome. Okay. But there are various platforms where you can learn the language. Right. Okay. Um, if if you are in the in our chat on Ms. Batia Kayat, if you're on our platform on WhatsApp, we can actually send you the link there. We can put a link on the chat and then you can actually connect, connect to it there. Yeah, I, I attended a meeting on Thursday. Okay. And I gave my number to someone, so I'm just waiting. All right, fantastic. Me on. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions? Zach or... Oh. I saw Sheldon with his hand up a few times and Zach stopped. Yeah. So okay, Zach, and then okay, Sheldon, Zach. I won't, I won't let you fight. So I'll just choose Zach, and then we'll move to Sheldon. Okay, um, Zach, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to um ask about um, you know, you said that um, we're in a university and we're here to learn. Mm. And um, when I started my journey, it was my husband that motivated me to start the journey because um, I didn't see the point of going on a spiritual journey because I didn't see the benefit of you know the word the way the way the world is and mm. you know the Canaanites ruling and things going wrong and even with Malachi York being in prison and all the other stuff when I started the journey I was wondering what is the ultimate um I know we we're not supposed to be selfish and we're not supposed to be for self mm. and then we have all these things going inside of us and we are supreme being you know where where Number one, what is the ultimate goal of us? You know, you go to university, you want to graduate, you want to get a certificate in something. Yeah. So what is the ultimate um, goal of us as nine E for being number one? Mm -hmm. And secondly, is where how do we get the balance of tapping into our supreme being? And when we get there, what do we, how do we use it? And how do we use it to benefit the world for change and for good? Very good question. Um, right, the first one is the graduation, okay, is becoming one being, becoming, coming together and working for and off by each other. That's the ultimate goal. Now, that's on this realm, because as I said, we created vast and ancient societies, yeah, and, and, and this is how the ancient ones will come and visit us on a periodic basis because they created a society and a civilization where we practice our rituals on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you, you know, when you study ancient Egypt, they always say the ancient Egyptians were very religious or they did, you know, the most of the things they did was to their ancestors, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to get back to that where we become one being, one mind, because what God feared according to Genesis is that they had become one mind and everything that they thought of, they could accomplish. You see what I'm saying? So we have to perfect ourselves to the point where we relinquish and get rid of all of these egos and desires and selfishness, etc., and dwell on the level of our shuk, divine love. Yeah, because divine love is what builds things. Working together is what builds things. So that's the level that we got, got to. So that's the ultimate goal, yeah, is to be able to do that. I mean, right now, our ultimate task at the moment 
is to help the master out, get the master out of, 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 of where he is. And, and, and we keep stressing it in every class, every time. Love and unity is the key. He says it so many times. Love and unity is the key that will free him. And in that, say, that saying, as, as I said before, it sounds simple, but how many people are prepared to apply that principle? You with me? Where we support each other in, in every facet that we can think of. How can I do what I can do for Wusabat? Not what can Wusabat do for me? What can I do for Wusabat? Can I come to the store, for instance, and help out? Can I um, go and hold classes? Can I open a store somewhere else? Can I, do you know what I mean, um, make events? You know, how can I get involved in events so that I can help to also bring others to Wusabat? It's, it's all these different facets. So it's not just one thing that will, you know, help you or help others is is what you can give to us about what are your qualities what as ed was saying it's all about us having those individual skills abilities etc binding together recognize that we're one being yeah we are all brothers and sisters just in different skin suits once we're able to transcend the skin suits and look at each other as one being and call myself, my, you my sister, you my brother, etc. on that level, without having any prejudices and those other things that come with it. Once I'm able to do that, then, do you know what I mean? We're kind of like almost there. But ultimately, if we are able to do things by love and unity, the master teacher is so, it, 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 that's what he's here for, is to create deities, you with me? raise you up from a beast or animal state because that's how far some of us have fallen to a god state and then the god state means you're now responsible to be able to make things happen so making things manifest and having those abilities will become easier and then something will happen where you'll be activated once you are found worthy you'll be activated by having your barrel three gland inserted or it will grow naturally it will be given it will be given to you in a genetic way where it will grow naturally and it growing naturally will allow you to have access to other extraterrestrial beings or other entities that also link to you which you're not even aware of because there are other relatives out there other supreme beings out there other extraterrestrials out there who are also re related to you but we haven't been introduced to all of them yet. Right now, he's introduced us to Patar, okay? And letting us know that Patar is the being that was the one responsible for the DNA that seeded this planet, okay? So that will be our supreme being. And then once we're able to overstand that level, we'll be able to take and be introduced to other, other supreme relatives that also are in existence. So he's raising us in degrees to allow us to recognize what our powers are, but our powers really is in our unity. It really is, is in our unity. When I can see you as my brother or my sister, you see what I'm saying? And be able to sit down and conversate with each other and then formulate ways to improve this store, to improve our lives, etc. That's the powers that we have. It's not no... Um, I mean, that's part of it. You can have the ability to fly. You do have the ability to shape shift. You do have many, many abilities. But the, what the, one of the things the master said in an update is that you, we haven't got to that level yet where we can actually activate certain things in us, but we do have it. So constant, constant practice of Wusabat and the unity, we're going to be exposed to things that are far more... Um, was it um what's the word i'm looking for advanced. advanced thank you son thank you i love that i love your input you're gonna teach them <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we'll be in an advanced level okay and um that the, the supreme being that you're talking about is we still work within the realms of um the rules of natural nature <clears throat> see being a supreme being doesn't mean oh i can just go here and here when i want it's all by the rules of natural nature you with me just like why the master teacher at a particular cycle was not incarnating at that cycle. There had to be a particular time and a particular date 
and a place for him to be able to incarnate. So as long as we're doing what we're doing and connecting and working and coming to, we have many events. Come to the, if, if you are in the UK, if you are in the London area or just outside of London, even if I'm, this is just putting it out there. If it's once a month, once, you know, every other month or whatever, but show your face, show up to the events that we, we invite people all the time to all our events, come to them, learn to lo know what we're about, learn to be, you know, working towards becoming a Sabian, you know, wearing your cultural dress, being proud of who you are, et cetera, and let natural nature work in your favor. Because what it is, is if we're not living our culture, okay, which is part of growing the universe, we are universal beings. Guess what will happen? The universe wants exist and we won't exist. And then these entities, like the um, the person who's now just become the president of the United States, yeah, Donald Trump, if you don't think they're going to ram rampant if we don't get our act together, think again. It's, it will get worse. And that's what I was trying to ask when we talk about supreme beings, because, like, you know, we had that character, did it exist or not exist, um, Jesus. Mm. And he did many miracles and stuff like that. So with the question is supreme beings that we, we grow into, because for me personally, it's like, what do you, because I can tap into some of my things already. So mm. I get angry when I see a lot of things. And I want to, so when you say natural nature, I'm like, what, where, where is the balance of what you can do and not do? Okay. And when you're saying about balance and helping our people. Right. That's the so, question I want to ask. Okay. So you you are in a position where you can be amongst us, okay, and help those who need spiritual guidance, for instance. If you're a healer, if you're a natural healer, okay, you could te be teaching about healing. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're a seer, like you can see, you know, you've got clairvoyance, for instance. You could be somebody who is in our culture, learning the language, etc. So when it's time for the ancestors to reveal certain information or communicate to you, you be then able to then say, I've been guided by blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? Not in a, in a way where it becomes egotistical or in a mental state where you're not mentally stable. You with me? Because people have many people have come and say, I'm being guided by the master teacher, and this is what you should do, and I think I, it should go this way, etc. I'm not saying it like that. What I'm saying is that there are gonna be those who will be contacted. You with me? And there's the signs will be put in your place. Like for instance, um the master teacher has chosen certain females who wear um a sigil. You know what a sigil is? It's like a, a medallion that yes. has certain symbols on them. You with me? And within those symbols, there's a navigation that will show them where to go, for instance. So if you are that type of person of that persuasion and you are within Wu Sabat, you be contacted when the time is right. The master teacher will touch you in a way if you are one of those people to be touched. I see you, my brother. Yeah. And then they will be able to then you'll be able to then help us, guide us. If you are a person that is into healing, we've got a brother here. So I'm going to put you on the spot here, Zamal. You've got a brother who does tuning forks. Yeah, he will assist us or he assists some of us into helping tune our body vibration. So there's many different, as, as again, going back to what Ed was saying, we have different skills and multiple things. But right now, the hub for us is Nashat. This is our temple stroke store where we practice our cultural um, chanting and spiritual night. You with me? We have our, obviously, we have our temple here for classes and we have our temple here for events. You with me? So that we're trying to do many things, but many more hands, as you know, makes light work. Okay. So it's down to you to make that conscious decision. If you're in the London area or et cetera, come to the events, see how you, what you can offer. You with me? And then work your way to becoming a Sabian. You know, dressing, dressing and behaving and acting and doing what Sabians do, which is help to raise humanity. You know, so I hope that answers your question. And that supreme being is all of us. That's the supreme being. Right. Thank you. You're welcome, my sister. Any other questions? Did you have a question, uh, son? I thought Medallion was like a coin.
Oh, okay. Um, a, a medallion is is literally like they say a medal. That's where the word medal comes from. So the medal is a, it's a, um, a circular object, mm -hmm. okay, and it will have some kind of imprint on it. So some of these imprints that are on it, they're certain words or certain um, patterns that are used to either for that person, individual, to know what they're supposed to do. You with me? Or it's just to for them to remember this is a protection. Mm -hmm. So that's what medals and medallions are for. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're welcome. Sheldon. Oh, Sheldon. Yes, yeah, sorry. I nearly forgot you. Um, yeah, five minutes to go. All right. Sheldon, fire away with your question. Um, I'll, It's still kind of touching on what I was speaking about before. Mm -hmm. Um, Everything that you've said, even before Wusa back, so, somewhat, well, it did resonate with me. And I understood earlier that it is about unity and we can move forward a lot faster mm. when we work together. Mm -hmm. And the fact that God is in us and he's not some guy in the sky. Mm. I did try to explain this to the people around me and it felt like, <laughs> even before I tried to explain this though, when I was living my purposeful life, mm. well, before, because so sometimes you fall off and the disagreeable beings get you. But when, the, when it was disagreeable beings with me, I felt hate coming towards the people who were supposed to be close to me. Mm -hmm. I felt as if they as if they didn't like me trying to change. Mm. And I didn't want to consume meat anymore. And mm. someone close to me said, when are you going to start eating normal food again? <laughs> like, you lot really don't like... Yeah. We've all been there. We've all been in Sheldon. In some what, shape what? or form, we've all been there. That's why it's good together with those who resonate on the same frequency as you. And hence, we keep advocating come to the events etc because then you feel comfortable and at home knowing that when you're eating your couscous or your vegetables mm. or or your plantain and 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 you no know, non 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 um, meat dairy tree uh thing mm. i must stress okay don't no nobody feel guilty if they're still eating various asp and foods that they know they shouldn't be eating it's not about feeling guilty. It's about making the conscious decision to then eliminate it slowly from your diet. Okay, nobody's going to be judged here because some of us still eat fish, some of us still eat chicken, and we're just making slow transitions in our daily lives to become that supreme being again. You see what I'm mm. saying? So it's not about being judgmental. It's about the fact that you've acknowledged, okay, this is what I need to do. These are the things I need to do. Be mindful what you're doing. Also, I implore you, okay, whatever relative is in your circle, mm. the best example that you can be. You with me? See the changes that Wu Sabat is making in your life. But, but, what, but, yeah, but what happens when, when I do that and all I feel was hate back towards me, like angst and like... Remember what I said, there's ancestors who have conflict in them. It's not necessarily them themselves. It's whatever is in them. Mm -hmm. has ill feelings towards you and what happens is it's expressed through them i could feel it yeah you know mm. what i'm saying so it's not necessarily that is that particular individual but because the emotions like for instance if somebody's eating you know you know i don't i don't eat um meat anymore i eat you know this is what i want i want salad i want this i want that, i want that and then somebody's like yeah but why do you want to eat that and then all of a sudden they have this energy that you don't feel comfortable with Mm. You know, their, their emotions, okay, triggers. It triggers an ancestor. That's how, that's why the master teacher part of the book, Feeding the Forces. It's your emotions. Remember, emotions is energy emotion. So that energy emotion, it triggers a genetic expression in you, which is linked to your relatives who have transitioned or... Um, who are in your DNA, who are in your blood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily you per se, or so I say, it's not necessarily them per se, is that sometimes that ancestor is triggered by an energy from that particular person, their emotion. Mm. So their emotion, you're like, oh, I have to go, go and get more grass to feed this boy. Do you know what I mean? As a, uh -huh. and, and it's like, why do I why do I have to cook something different from him? Those ill feelings that is generated is activating an emotion. And that emotion is then being expressed because you're activating an ancestor who may not like 
you per se or like what you're doing. Because what does that mean? It means then now, if that individual, okay, who might think, hmm, you know what, what, what such and what Sheldon's doing, it seems positive, you know, that particular relative might not want that individual to elevate. They want to probably keep them on that level so they can yeah. eat off of them. Remember, yeah. this is this is this is what and, and, um, some ancestors do, relatives do. They don't want you to elevate. You know what they want to do is keep you on the smoking, keep you on the drinking, keep you on the partying because that's what works for them. And then there's some, and then what happens is you suppress the ones that want to help you. Uh, so, am I just supposed to accept potentially that these guys aren't going to make the grade? It's not about because you being I, judgmental or saying that they're not going to make the grade. You live the best way as a Sabian as you can, or at, within the frames of of natural nature as you can. Because remember, as I said, you are a sun, and what a sun does is what it radiates and that mm -hmm. life-giving radiation some people are going to be touched by it some people are not going to be touched by it you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it's your job as a son to then radiate that energy uh, i've had experiences myself and being in my family they call me dr michael that's what they refer to me as because i'm always like administering either some herb you see what I'm saying? Or I'm chanting. I've even got some of them to um, family members to now fast on a nine day fast with me. Why? Because I've been doing it consistently for the past 25, 30 years. I've never mm. been a hypocrite. If I say I'm going to class, that's where I'm at. I'm not down by my friends smoking weed or whatever the case may be. I'm consistent. One of the things people see is that if you're consistent with something, especially females, I'll tell you that right now, yeah, if females see you're consistent with something, you're more likely to be trusted. If you're not consistent and you're in and out, in and out, like, this guy's not serious. So how can they take Wu Sabat serious then? Mm. No, you're right. You're right. Definitely. Yeah? Okay. Um, I've got three questions. Um, Selgin, I've answered your, Jose. It's yours, and then anybody yes, else online greetings. before we um close up for class. Rubble bag, uh, once again, right. greetings. Um, I have a question from my sister Isabel from Mozambique. Okay. And the question is how to experience the other dimension? How to experience what? The other dimension. Oh, the other dimension, how to experience it. Um, you experience the other dimensions in your dreams, okay? And what it is, is your soul and your spirit is not bound by this realm alone. When you go to sleep, your spirit and your soul, which is energy, actually transitions through your etheric cord, okay, and traverses and moves to other dimensions, so when you experience in certain dreams and certain lucid dreams, sometimes your soul and spirit are in that realm. And you may meet relatives there or encounter um, other things which you interpret as dreams. Not all the time, but sometimes you experience certain things when your spirit and your soul moves into other, other dimensions. And then what happens is that your spirit and your soul, when they return to your physical body, is anchored by your, your etheric cord to the other dimensions. Now, what takes place is that through your journey in life, your physical life, you may encounter certain places that you think, hold on, I feel like I've been here before. Or somebody's about to say something and you see it happening before it actually manifests. It's because your spirit and your soul have traveled into future or past because it's not bound by time. And then what happens is then it's then relayed into your subconscious by way of your DNA. And then when you, when your physical body now catches up to that timeline, then you see what they refer to as deja vu. Yeah. And then it is, it's confirmed what you experienced in your dream or in your dim in the in the other dimension does that make sense 
Yes, it does make sense for me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. And she's on the chat, unless she wants to top up a, a question on it, but on my side, I'm, I'm okay. Thank, thank you very much. No I worries. Appreciate it. I'm pretty sure she's probably shy or something, you know, uh, we, we do get that. So um, I'm conscious of the time. I then I have to ask my moderator if I can take any more questions before we leave. So moderator, one more question. Okay, one more question and then we'll go. Who's got, who's, who wants to be asked a question before we close for the day, for the evening? I would just like to ask. Okay. When is the fasting that you talk about a nine day fast? Okay, the nine day fast is on the winter solstice, nine days before the 21st. So that'd be, a th I believe that's the 13th of December. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 13th of December, which is a Friday. Okay, so on the 21st, you break your, that's when you end your fast, and then you break your fast on the 22nd. Okay, and with that, there's chanting that you can acquire that we've got our chance. Okay, and I, again, I'm going to stress, it's not practical, it's not practical for everybody, because people work, etc. But if you're able to do it, it's not by law, it's not required, it's not compulsory, it's not mandatory. It's a choice, <laughs> yeah. So don't feel guilty if you didn't do it, okay? And um, what does the fast consist of? Like only water, like it's a liquid fast, soup, mm -hmm. okay. And there's certain things you abstain from. You drink alcohol, <laughs> <laughs> so you know things like you abstain from alcohol. Do you know what I mean? No cursing, mm -hmm. don't no fighting. Try to keep yourself in a meditative oh, so state. Overall fast, not just a food fast. Yeah, so it's like literally you it's a liquid fast. Mm -hmm. So you can choose what liquid and then you can break your fast as a little soup, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um again, the fast is from when you wake up to um sunset, sunrise. Sorry, so sunset. I mean, so sun sunrise to sunset, as it were, because obviously it's winter time, it can get quite dark. But if you're able to sustain that for nine days, well done to you. If you're not, you don't feel guilty about it. You know what I mean, there's no hell you're going to go to and some pitchfork guy is going to, you know what I mean? You're not going to get any of that, but know that it helps you. It's beneficial for you. Okay. So that's the end of connection. You're connecting with your ancestors. Just think about it that way. You're connecting with your natural nature and your ancestors. Okay. Um, that was the last one, I believe. Last question. Or did somebody say something else, wasn't it? I heard somebody say something. Um, if no one's got a question, I've got a question. Rahul Bhatt, Samal. Uh, for as much, yeah. Rahul Bhatt, Samal. What's your question? Uh, I was asking about, is the sponsored walk tomorrow? Yes. And, this... what, and if so, where would we meet in Crystal Palace? What part? Okay, I will send that to you, uh, my brother. Okay, you yeah. welcome. you're welcome. See you then. Okay, for those who didn't know, we're doing a sponsored walk. Obviously, it's late in the day, but I did post it if you're in the um, Sabian um, Nisbatia Kayat chat room platform. It's a sponsored walk. Again, we're doing a walk, okay, to raise funds for the master teacher, legal fees, et cetera, and his legal um, team that are helping to fight the fight on that aspect. You know, while we fight the fight on this aspect, spiritual fight, um, fight et cetera. So, yeah. Those who can attend, um, there was an invite. Um, if you can't, don't again, don't feel guilty. Do it in your own kind of way. If you can donate, you can do whatever to raise awareness and consciousness of what's happening with our master teacher. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our question answer and joining online and in Zoom and on in our Nashat store. Um, check out nashat.co.uk for all the courses uh on ds4 where you can learn more about your spiritual journey um seek out united sabian worldwide.com if you want to be a member you can seek membership on there um what else have i missed yet yeah, we've got our walk coming up as i said and there's children's day as well that we do okay that's coming up on december the 15th children's day um for those who would like to are seeking to become members and would like to come and see and meet with the family. That's another opportunity for you there. Um, is there anything else I missed, Emma? Are there any weekday classes? Unfortunately, no. We are not. We yeah, so so much going on. <laughs>
But if there was, um, we 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 we'll aim for it one day. Oh, you mean talking about the spiritual classes? Yeah, we have spiritual classes on Thursdays for those who want to attend. Sunday and Sundays. Um, so find out information about that. Um, but we do post this on our. So if you don't have um, the on the platform, you can leave your number and then we can add you. And then all the things are posted on there. Okay. Again, like to say, Tawakum Lahe Ya Toy, which means Jamal. Thank you all. Yes. Remember, I do the Tuesday live classes. Ah, sorry. Yes. So we have our brother Ken on OS and Vision doing the Tuesday live. Ask anything you want. Okay. Ask us anything. Um, and we will get back to you as well. So we're on that platform as well. And um, we try, we get back to you and we answer your questions on. So it's kind of like a class, um, but it's a mini quick answer fire question class. Okay, hosted by our brother Seken Sacham Reye. And um, we have moderators on there. I'm one of them. When we, we get online, we can answer your questions there as well. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot that we can feed into as Sabians. And um, I appreciate your time. Wadu, take care. Ahrus, um, Ashok. <laughs>